Hey, good evening. Welcome to the April 11th, 2024 Northampton School Committee. Um, this is actually the Northampton Student Advisory Council, Council meeting before the school committee meeting. I am Julia Shara, Chair of School Committee. I'll be presiding. Meeting is being held both remotely on Zoom pursuant to the modification of the state's open meeting law for the pandemic and in person here in the community room of JFK Middle School. This meeting and all participating will be audio and video recorded. I am Zara and I am the school committee representative for the NHS Student Union and we are the NHS Student Union. Okay, just some. Um, quick intros, just quickly go around. Um. I'm Sabrina Hopkins, I'm a senior and I'm the president of the Student Union. I'm Giselle Ohm, I am the vice president of the Student Union and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Nadia Lowy Orzlek. I'm a sophomore and I'm in Student Union. I'm Reed O'Connor. I am a sophomore and I am a part of the Student Union. I'm Max Hartley. I'm a junior and I'm a member of the Student Union. I'm Scarlett Bowman. I'm ninth grade and I'm a part of the Student Union. I'm Anna Lucia. I'm a ninth grader and I'm a part of the Student Union. My name's Lucy Broadus. I am not a part of the student union, but I am the class president of the senior class. I'm a senior. Okay. So we wanted to add on to our budget statement uh, that we read at the last school committee meeting. It was also published partially in the Gazette. And we're just going to share a little bit about how the student <coughs> perspective is going to be impacted with the budget cuts. So we're going to start off with elective courses. Elective courses are classes that are not specifically required to graduate, but enrich the experience of students at NHS. These classes explore many areas of study that broaden students' worldview and allow them to challenge themselves. Next slide. All right. So sort of in that realm, we have AP and other advanced courses. North Edmond High School has a history of being renowned for its wide range of different AP and honors courses that cover multiple different types of classes, and as students aspire to achieve academic excellence, AP classes emerge as an essential aspect of our school. Additionally, as GPA inflation becomes increasingly relevant, an important indicator for success for college admissions officers is course rigor. Almost all students from our school take at least one AP or honors class in their high school career, and jeopardizing the availability of these classes not only makes us lose our academic competitiveness, as we said before, to other surrounding school districts, but it also fails the very standards of education that high schools are expected to give students. We can go to the next slide, please. Um, so another... Um, area of elective classes that will be impacted are courses that cover the history or the language of marginalized people. Um, so in the past, the Student Union has reviewed the program of studies and identified only six classes at the, um, offered at the high school um, fit our description of a class that covers underrepresented people fully and comprehensively. This is already not enough. Um, we are required to take two U.S. history classes and only one world history class, and these courses do not fit our description of a class that covers underrepresented people um, fully and comprehensively. There are only six, that is a one-digit number, of these classes at our school, and all six of these classes are electives and are at risk of being cut from the program of studies if there isn't money to fund them. Many students go into high school excited to take classes on subjects that interest them, and these classes are largely electives and are at risk of being cut. To, to cut electives is to cut student interests. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, cool. Many, if not most, of the days we come into the building, only the first four bathrooms for each sex are open, as well as the, well as the two single-stall gender-neutral bathrooms and guidance. All of the other available bathrooms, which are available to students, um, two per floor, are locked. This is due to a shortage of human resources to monitor bathrooms. It is very rare to find a bathroom that is not crowded with students and a full line out the door. This affects how safe students feel while using the bathrooms and how much time they have to spend away from class instead of learning. Um, students often wait 
15 minutes just to use the bathroom at NHS. When bathrooms are locked, it is worse for students with disabilities and medical conditions to wait. This is not safe. Go to the next slide. Every year, the musical brings in thousands of community members and sheds a positive light on the NHS Performing Arts program. It also helps attract prospective students to NHS, especially if they're prospective students to a school with a good theater program. The impending budget cuts could prevent the play from happening in the future, which could harm public perception of NHS. This could lead to declining enrollment and would have an overall negative impact on the NHS community. Programs such as band and chorus are ways for students to find communities and express themselves. If these programs are cut, students would lose these connections and opportunities to make music together. Regardless of whether these <coughs> or not these students choose to pursue a career in arts, these courses are essential for many students' high school experiences. While um, I'm not in the student union, so I was not a part of creating this slideshow, I was invited to speak during this time because I have stage managed the last three NHS musicals. Um, these musicals have changed my life, and you will hear this later from me in public comment, but um, they are a life-changing experience for many students at NHS. We have over 100 students participate every year, and it grows every year, and it's it's just such a community that we cannot afford to lose. It is helps students with their mental health, and we're already short on mental health resources in the schools, which is a big issue. So taking this away is just going to negatively impact that as well. Um, Stage managing, stage managing these musicals made me decide to pursue stage management professionally next year in college. And while this is not about me, it's about the greater school community, I can just say I'm sure it has done the same for many students on changing what they thought was possible for themselves in their career and in their future. This is a vital part of our school community that reaches over 2,500 people every year. And it's only going to get bigger, it, but if we cut it, I, there's going to be so many students going out of district, and it's not going to be good for our schools. If a guidance position is cut, guidance counselors will take on 300 students instead of 230. I've been fortunate to work with guidance counselors throughout the college process this year, and I've gotten so much support with um, supplementals and all of the logistical stuff, all of the websites that you need to apply to college. There's so much to do. When there's less help available and the guidance counselors have this many students to work with, there is only so much time to go around. There are some students who will be able to go home and pay to get a private college advisor at home. Some students won't be able to pay for that, and they'll just have to make do with what's at school. If we get the um, internship position cut, and we have the peer tutor network go away, students who can't pay for tutoring on their own are going to be left hung up to dry. <laughs> we need to know that when we cut budgets, who are the students that we are taking these resources away from? Who is really vulnerable here and what are we doing? Growing up in Northampton as a student who's not white is extremely difficult. Oh, read it. Just show it to me. And When I had to experience racial harassment growing up in this district, I went to our school adjustment counselor, KGB. And KGB is retiring this year. And if her position is not filled, who are students going to go to to talk about this stuff when there are adults who they can't trust and there are students who they can't trust to talk about the racial harm that they face in this school and in these schools? Let's be honest about what we're taking away 
and who's going to suffer even more. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So I'm going to be talking about the impact of class size. Some classes which have already or are very close to reaching capacity have little to no space for students to move around. Some classrooms, desks are packed from wall to wall and we cannot move. With bigger classes, students cannot get the support they need in class and out of class in flex. Students that have IEPs uh, may find it harder to focus in a crowded classroom and uh, it can also pose a safety risk, especially if there's a lockdown and there's not enough space for students to shelter away from entrances. Teachers, teachers will also find it harder to differentiate with more students to focus on and they won't be able to t know who's, who needs what and when. I just want to add on, we've been talking a lot about the SUNY experience, and one thing that we've forgotten to mention, a large, if not one of the most important parts of the SUNY experiences is the teachers in our school. With big teachers, <laughs> we build connections with teachers, especially since we're working in the same departments, we'll have reoccurring teachers. I've had multiple teachers that I've had two years in a row. If we lose these teachers, not only are we losing these connections, but potentially there's kids who are losing their safe space, their person who they can go up to talk to if they need any help. And people who can like college recommendation letters, this is all important when you're building a community inside a school is to have people who you can trust and have people who you know you can learn with and work with well. And cutting the teachers not only cuts those classes, but it also like impacts a lot of the students' mental health, which as Lucy said, we already are losing resources with there, so cutting teachers only makes that worse. To kind of synthesize the points that Sabrina and Nadia just made, every single employee in the schools is important for different reasons. Some teachers are important because of the physical teaching and education they provide, and arguably all of them are, but some are even more important because of the relationships they build with students. And I'm not just talking about students who achieve what we would call academic excellence. All students in our schools are important. And cutting any teacher, regardless of what they do, is cutting those relationships. Relationships with high achieving students and relationships with students who struggle, who arguably need more support. So, as Sabrina already said, it's really important that we remember who is going to be affected by these cuts and really prioritize every single student in our school next year by passing a level services budget. As high school students here, we have focused heavy, um, almost fully on the high school parts of the cuts, but briefly before we move on, I want to mention just what's be also being cut at the elementary schools and the other levels. Because what's being cut at those elementary school levels and the middle schools is only going to negatively impact those students as they move up through the district and eventually get to the high school. We're cutting tiered support specialists, academic supports, people who serve our students who might need that extra help or even don't, but just need another person there to help us learn because I think we can all relate to needing that at some point. Um, being in school is hard no matter what your age is and where you are academically achieving and so cutting these supports is only going to negatively impact our students further at you know JFK there's talk about cutting a world language and making world language every other day that means students at the high school aren't going to achieve as high of a level in those other languages that college <coughs> really really look for these days it is an extremely important part of students learning and it also serves our you know, underrepresented groups with um, giving people a place to speak languages like Spanish and French. So 
it is extremely important we look at all cuts and see how it's only negatively impacting all students as they move up through our district. This year, and since COVID, Northampton has been a beacon of high level classes, a wonderful arts community, and just an overall strong community with great support for all students. That's a community that people want to move into. If the issue is declining enrollment, invest in our future. Invest in higher enrollment. <laughs> invest in level funding so that students don't choice out and go to charter schools and go to these PVPAs and East Hampton. In past years, we've had people, I remember when I was going into ninth grade, all of my friends were all trying to choice in from other areas, friends from sports and stuff. They were trying to get in here. Now, when I talk to my younger brother about what's happening to our school and the people being cut and the positions being cut, he looks for other options outside of the district, as will many other students. When you don't invest in your school, you're not investing in future enrollment. If the issue is enrollment, Invest in your community. Okay, well, um, that was our presentation, and I am sure you'll hear more and more about this topic tonight. Thank you for hearing us, and I really hope you hear us when we say we need a level services budget. Thank you. Thank you all. Are, are there any questions or comments? Any questions on that? Um, all right, so then we are going to the student representative report. Okay. Um, I already said this, but I'll say it again. I am Zara Usman. I am sophomore at NHS, and I am the school committee representative on the student union. Um, okay, so part of my role as the school committee representative is to give a report of what's going on each month in the school. So usually events um, and exciting activities, and they all include like the fall play, the musical, elective classes, AP classes, field trips, chamber choir, band, the peer tutor network, our Hamptons, capstones, sports news, um, like student awards, art exhibits, and healthcare and IT pathways. Um, this is a diverse group of activities that keep students in school and students in our school, in Northampton Public Schools. When I bring you updates in the future, if you pass these cuts, they will not look like this. They will not have this diverse offering of activities for students to participate in with a thriving school community. Every single program at NHS and at all of our schools in Northampton Public Schools needs to be maintained. And we, the NHS Student Union, have uh, voted to support the passing of a level services budget, and we really urge you to do so. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time, and I hope you listen to everything that's going to be said this week. Any questions or comments? Yep, member sign. Um, I have a question I asked you at the last meeting too. I'm just wondering if you could give us a sense of how the reset and changes to the bathroom situation have been going. Um, if you've noticed any differences in access or issues with lines, et cetera. Um, Do any of you want to answer that? There's still lines. Yeah, I, it's, I, I have not noticed a difference. So uh, I, if that answers your question. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we are going to start public comments. You can always submit a written public comment, which is equally part of the public record. To do so, you can email Northampton-School-Committee Northampton at Northampton-K12.us, and it will be sent to all school committee members. The school committee does not respond during public comment. 
as it's the public's time to speak. So while your comments should be directed to the school committee, you'll understand when we don't respond to them. We're going to start at 6.57, and we are going to start with Ian Goodman, please. And again, please state your name and city or town for the record. All right, um, Ian, please. Thank you. My name is Ian Goodman. I live on Franklin Street in Northampton. I'm the parent of a first grader at Jackson Street School. Um, one of the rules of public speaking that I learned in my high school elective public speaking course, um, which is important to take, is don't follow people that speak better than you. And um, <laughs> God, I'm so impressed with our high school students. And, and, and all of you should be so impressed with your high school students. You're all educators, and look what you've managed to accomplish. They're so impressive. And that's a testament to them, to their parents, to their teachers, to the policies that you guys have put in place. And, and thank you. Thank you. I want my first grader, when he is in high school, to be able to speak like that. I want my first grader, when he's in high school, to have that level of commitment, to have that level of insight, to have that degree of compassion and caring for their co-students and their friends and their colleagues and their teachers. And that's not gonna happen if we make cuts. So I ask you to just stand up and say no. No to an 8% cut, no to a 4% cut, no to cuts. Give our students what they need to be successful. Balance the city budget off the backs of adults, not children. Next is Laurel on Zoom. You should be able to unmute. Hello. Mm -hmm. I am Evan Carangelo. I'm a sixth grader at JFK. This is my opinion on the school budget. Schools need more funding. If teachers got paid four times as much, they would never snap at students. They would feel <laughs> calm, collected, and happy to be there. But let's bring our attention to the phys ed department. Those teachers should still get paid four times as much. But no money for extra equipment is unacceptable. Eventually, all the equipment will rot. All the basketballs will be deflated. And there should be other equipment, too. Thank you for hearing my speech. Thank you for your speech. Could you tell us your name and the city and town that you live in? Oh, let, let him. Sorry, I have to. Fix. I don't think you're muted. Oh wait. Yes, you. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, now we're unmuted. Okay, go ahead, Evan. I'm I'm a student at JFK Middle School, and my name, as I stated, is Evan Crenshaw. In Northampton, Massachusetts. We live in Northampton. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next is Kai Imperial Jewett in, this, in the room. Good evening. My name is Kai Imperial Jewett, and I'm a sophomore at NHS. Over the past two years, I have gotten to be a part of this amazing community at the high school. When my peers and I heard of the budget cuts, we were all beyond shocked and worried for the future of our high school careers. As you heard, these cuts will lead to less elective classes being offered, such as AP Calculus and AP Statistics. I had planned to take both APs in my following years, as I am a huge math nerd. But if these popular classes are cut, students will be more dependent on dual enrollment at Smith, classes, at Smith and community colleges, 
which are inaccessible for many due to scheduling, transportation, and cost. Firing teachers would also result in even fewer bathrooms being open. Many days, there is only one bathroom open for boys, one for girls, and two single gender neutral stalls. Because of this, there are often lines around the corner for bathrooms. I and many other kids who only feel comfortable using the gender neutral stalls sometimes must leave class for 20 to 30 minutes just to go to the bathroom, missing out on valuable learning time. If positions are cut, these problems will only increase. I was also especially concerned when I heard that the said budget cuts would likely damage, if not completely end, the NHS theater program. I have dreamed of being in the NHS musicals ever since I was in third grade, and my parents took me to see Grease, the musical. I was blown away by the students' talent and the quality of the production. It was the spark of the arts that was born in me that day. Later in eighth grade, one of the reasons I decided to go to the NHS public schools instead of a charter school such as PVPA was seeing the production of Mamma Mia. I could not believe how great it was. Everyone was singing and dancing like they'd never be able to do it again. We were all so happy and excited just to be there together after the isolation of COVID. I remember thinking, that's going to be me one day. And as of right now, I've been in all the musicals and the plays at the high school. Each has been an amazing and invaluable experience, both to do what I love and to make friends along the way. And one of the reasons our theater program is as good as it is, as good as, if not better, than PVPA is, <laughs> is our director, David Grout. <laughs> He has been working incredibly hard and being dedicated to helping us all shine like the stars we are. He has truly uplifted this program and everyone in it to become the Marvel is today. Since my third grade, my spark has grown into a passion that I carry with me every day. But if we lose Dave and the theater program, so many students, present and future, will lose their own spark and their dream to perform. And these problems will affect all students. Even if not everyone does theater, or takes calculus, or uses the gender-neutral bathrooms, these losses will cause a ripple effect and bring the whole school community down. So, Ty, that's time. Can you finish your sentence? Hmm? That's time. Oh, 30 seconds ago was time. Can you finish your sentence? Oh, yeah. Um, our generation is the future of Northampton, of the country, and of the world. Invest in it. Please put our education first. Next is Sarah Churchill Windsor on Zoom. You should Good evening. Good. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. My name is Sarah Churchill Windsor and I live in South Deerfield. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight, Mayor Shara, Superintendent Bonner, and our school committee. I have been a sixth grade special education teacher and special education coordinator at JFK for 16 years and an executive board member of NACE as teacher chapter coordinator and professional rights and responsibilities chairperson for 14 years. Please stop using our contract to essentially blame the city's budget woes on NACE. I would like to remind the mayor, school committee, and city council that this was a collective bargaining agreement. This was a contract negotiated and mutually agreed upon by all stakeholders. This is our contract. It is, Na it is not NACE's contract. It is everyone's contract. Placing blame one way or another isn't going to make $4 million appear. Instead, it pits the school district against the city's citizens. The devastating cuts to education in this city will not bring students to enroll in our school districts. It will increase class sizes, limiting the effectiveness of our teachers and what interventions we can all use to assist in all of our learners. This in turn will drive families to consider using school choice into other surrounding districts or send those families to private or charter schools. 
I would also like to remind everyone that the reason stakeholders agreed to this collective bargaining agreement was because the educators and most notably the support staff were being, played off being paid offensively less than every other district in the area. As a result, we are losing excellent qualified and investing and invested members of staff because they can't always make ends meet on that salary. With cuts like this and the added pressure on the remaining staff, we will have attrition in our employment for different reasons. All of this will simply encourage declining enrollment, which creates a vicious cycle of declining budgets and increased costs. I'm not a financial expert, but I do know that families want to enroll and move into this area that provides the highest level of education and care for our students. We could be one of those districts. This deficit is not the fault of NACE. This comes from the top and the city needs to get creative in how it plans to budget for prioritizing education for the betterment of Northampton as a city and to do what's best for our students like Levi, Zara and Kai, please invest in level funding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, Asa Johnson. Come on up. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with Jesse Cannon, but we're going to share. Don't worry, we won't exceed. Hi, um, my name is Asa Johnson. I'm a sixth grader here at JFK, and I live in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Um, I'm here tonight to ask you not to cut $2 million from our schools. I am fighting for my education, the education of my peers, and the jobs of my teachers. It saddens me to know that, we have to fight for, that I have to fight for my education. I thought we were better than this. Classes like physical education, band, and others are proven to improve students' mental and physical health. I am 12 years old and I am concerned that I will not have a proper education when I am 13 and 14 and for the rest of my educational career. Please do what is right, not what is easy. Choose to fully fund our public schools, a good investment in the present and the future of our community. And my name is Jesse Cannon. I'm in the sixth Northampton. I'm in the sixth grade band and play the trumpet. I'm very concerned that our budget cuts will greatly affect our amazing music program and our amazing director, Miss Sirio. Playing an instrument has so many benefits to your mental health. It helps relieve stress, it improves your sleep, it improves your mood, and musical students perform better academically than their non-musical peers, and improves your coordination. These are only a few of the many benefits of playing an instrument. Thank you. Okay, Jean Coster on Zoom. Hi, thank you for the time. Um, my name's Jean Kester. I live in Florence, Massachusetts, and I'm here um, even though my three children graduated from the Northampton school system. Youngest uh, graduated nine years ago, so haven't really been a part of this for a while. And I'm also a retired homeowner in the city. So all of that means two things to me. I know how important all the school programs are. And I'm also concerned we avoid increase in taxes, but I'm, I'm coming to this discussion because, mostly because I am really, really uh, discouraged that the arts are on the truck chopping block. Uh, I'm coming to this discussion late in the game because I saw the article in the paper about the cuts to the theater and other arts programs. And I wanna say that they're as important to learning as any other role in the school, as are the support roles and the special ed roles. So I'm, I'm really discouraged to see all these things being contemplated. Um, and so, you know, um, I don't know what complicated answers there are, um, and I know you have a really difficult job, but I, I just need to say about the arts programs um, that they are equally as important to the students in the NoHo schools as all the other programs. My children were part of uh, multiple <coughs> arts programs as well as science and sports, and um, 
I can say, watching all of these programs over the years, the participation in a theatrical production requires the same things that other activities do and also provide the same benefits. Teamwork, practice, group effort, specialized learning, pride, empathy, cooperation, collaboration, they're all in that activity and they're all skills needed in the future work world. Hitting a high note in a song after practicing for months involves the same diligence, practice and focus as catching a perfect pass. Both of those things are equally important to some of the students in the school. Coordinating music, lights and people to hit that perfect emotion as the curtain rises or falls involves the same skills and collaboration as executing a perfect play. Finding just the right instruments and equipment to make the perfect lighting or sound cue requires the same learning and technical skills as finding the right tools and equipment to execute a scientific experiment. All of these endeavors require teachers and coaches to make successful learning experiences for as many students as possible. <coughs> Some of our school community uh, need the arts to practice those skills. From my children's classmates, I know several kids who make their living directly from their theater, arts, music, and media experiences in Northampton High. That's time. One is a movie producer in LA. One owns his own, uh, I'm sorry, I moved my thing. One owns sorry. his own mu music, um, theatrical technology company. One works sentence. in professional music production and one works for CGI for film. Those are real world jobs that came about because of the skills they developed at Northampton High School. It would be Thank really you. sad to deny future Northampton students the Thank same you. opportunities. Yeah. All opportunities need to be offered. Sports, music, Thank you. You're, you're almost a minute over time. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Thank you. I'm asking you to support a level funded budget, please. Thank you. So um, my name is Lucy Bradis. I am from Northampton, Massachusetts. I am a senior at NHS, and I have stage managed the last three musicals. Um, and I plan on going to Boston University next year for stage management. I, if you had asked me my sophomore year what a stage manager was, I would have said that's a fake position. You're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but thanks to the theater program at NHS my sophomore year, the year we did Mamma Mia, I got told I would be really good at it and I should try it. So I did, and I loved it. Now, that year, we were running under Beau Flahive, um, who had been working forever and so beloved, but she decided to retire. And so we were going to have a new theater teacher and a new choral director. The two people who came to fill those positions couldn't have been any better. Dave Grout and Susan Dillard. After learning who they were and harassing the arts department about who was going to fill the positions, I emailed them in late June, early July, um, before probably before their contracts even started. And I said, hi, um, I'm going to stage manage your musicals, and um, I know everything you need to know. And Dave has since told me that he knew my name before he knew his department head's name. <laughs> um, I'm really good at being persistent, but I'm also... I pride myself in learning that from the com community I've grown up in, which is here in Northampton. I did not want to be a stage manager professionally. I didn't think I could. I didn't think I was good enough until I worked with Dave on Rock of Ages. And I wouldn't say he directly told me that, but um, he said a things close to that, and that made me decide to go into stage management professionally. So the theater program and Dave Grout specifically changed my, the course of my life significantly. I don't want to see any students not get the opportunity to have those experiences. I don't want to see the over 100 students who participate every year have nothing to do and not have an opportunity to participate in the arts like I've gotten. I think of the musical specifically, like they're my family, and um, people joke that these over 50 cast members and crew are like my babies and they're like my children. Um, and I could not be prouder of the program that is growing and will continue to grow under Dave and Susan. But that's only if we can fund it. 
Um, I put a lot of work into keeping this program going through the staffing change, and um, so did everyone else, but it feels like it was all for nothing. It feels like all of that work and all of that time I put in is gonna disappear. And at Kai's speech, I started crying, and I'm gonna start crying now because that is the worst feeling in the world, for anyone to graduate high school and feel like everything they've done is all for nothing. Thank you. Okay, next is Levi Armstrong on Zoom. Uh, good evening, my name is Levi Armstrong. Welcome to my disgusting college dorm room in Boston, but Northampton is, is my home, so. Uh, I'm a recent graduate of Northampton High School and a proud alumni of the NHS Theater Department. It has come to my attention that a proposed budget plan for the upcoming school year includes personnel cuts to the science department, the history department, and the theater department, among others. I'd like to briefly share my personal experience with each department in the hopes that each of you can understand how extremely important the positions are that you are le considering letting go and how, they, and how they've helped, helped shape me as an average student. Starting with the science department, through my time at Northampton High, the dedicated teachers of the science department taught me some of the most important parts about science and how it falls into our daily life. I'd like to focus on one class in particular. In the fall of my senior year, I took a human anatomy course that uh, was one of my favorite classes I ever had. We had real hands-on experience, including dissecting sheep brains and cow eyes. This class taught me the valuable lessons about the human body and how to ensure that I treat my body well. It was also incredibly fun, and our teacher was super enthusiastic about it, which made it 10 times better. <laughs> this class was an elective course, and with the proposed budget cuts, future students may not have access to classes like this. On to the history department. History has always been my favorite course at school. Through the incredible teachers like Mr. Littlefield, Mr. Uh, Fontaine, Ms. Fontaine, excuse me, and Mr. Frischette, I got my love of history and politics, and now I'm majoring in political communications. The history department teaches the significance of our place in the world, what came before us, and how we can contextualize the actions of our ancestors into modern day decision making. By teaching critical classes like black history and government and politics, students grasp real life issues and learn how to make a difference in our world. I can personally say that without a doubt, I would not have the career path that I do without the expertise of the teachers in the history department. And with the possible cuts to their budget, the future of our community would not have the unique political awareness that makes Northampton special. And lastly, the theater department. I cannot stress how crucial the theater department is to me and hundreds of current and previous students. While the theater department may not be the most academically important, it's the place where I found my voice, which is arguably the most important thing someone can know how to use. And with full-time leadership of a theater teacher like Dave Grout, theater would not be the same. And who wouldn't want to go to school that can't put on productions of Freaky Friday, Rock of Ages, Mamma Mia, and more? It's vital for students to have access to a theater department like Northampton's so they can learn the importance of art and theater and have, and have experts help them discover their talents and uplift their voices so they know what they really are capable of as they enter the real world. Members, as you vote for the upcoming budget plan, I cannot stress how important it is to keep this in mind, and I'm calling on you to vote for a level services budget so the future of our generation and community and our country can have access to the same classes and activities that I did, which make my time in Northampton so special. Thank you for your time, and please, please, please remember that what might make the most fiscal sense may not be the best for our district. It's in times like this where we ask you to vote with your conscience and good hearts, because that's what we have elected you to do. Uh, Susanna Abel Zucker and Ivy Lovejoy. Good evening. My name is Ivy Lovejoy and I live in Northampton. My name, my name is Susanna Abel Zucker and I live in Northampton. We are the rising senior and junior technical directors of Northampton High School's Theater Tech Club, and we are speaking on behalf of the entire club, which has around 20 members. As longtime members and leadership figures in the club, as well as the crew for numerous NHS productions, we have witnessed firsthand the incredibly essential role that the Theater Tech Department plays in our school. We know through, 
extensive experience how detrimental the loss or reduction of a theater teacher would be to our community. And we know how important the positive effects of the performing arts department and its ability to thrive are for NHS students, because we have felt them time and time again. We keep a spreadsheet of the events the Theater Tech Club is responsible for so that students can sign up to run the events that they are interested in. As of right now, there are 29 events on that spreadsheet, ranging from the NHS Spring Concert to 8th Grade Caregivers Night. Every event that takes place in the auditorium is our responsibility in some manner or another. But we are students, not laborers, and we cannot and do not manage everything ourselves. For the past two years, Dave has picked up events which no one is available for, showed up to more elaborate events to make sure we are confident in running them, and coordinated the sign-up process. Without the full position of a theater teacher, and much, much more pressure will be put on the students to run events with little to no adult support, especially if something goes wrong. Additionally, the loss of a teacher trained in the theater arts will de deal a devastating blow to our collective knowledge as a theater department. The pandemic, coinciding with a change in theater teachers, has left us with a theater tech club that, with the exception of a select few, is largely untrained in the skills required to run events in the auditorium. Without this source of education, our, our knowledge and expertise will suffer more with every new generation of students until we, until we are no longer able to provide the school any service at all, and this will have truly devastating effects. We would ask you all how you would like to attend an assembly with no microphone, a concert with no lights. Dave's jurisdiction is not over not only the play and the musical, but every instance in which members of our community, from students to teachers, come together in large numbers to disseminate information, discuss our experiences, or experience art. These events are the very lifeblood of our community, and without Dave and a fully funded theater department, they are in grave peril. Though theater tech may serve the rest of the school practically, it serves us the same way performing arts serve hundreds of NHS students. By providing a vital emotional safe space that is, for many students, literally life-changing in a school with little to no mental health resources. We were told that Dave's position was chosen to be reduced because it would have the lowest possible impact. As technicians, as crew members, and as students, we say there is no choice that would be more impactful. Thank you. Next is um, my name is Annalise Labda Loveless. I'm in fourth grade at Bridge Street School, and I think that we should not have to lose so many teachers because they're important to our school, and they help out kids, and they're really nice. And I have two teachers that I really don't want to say goodbye to, Miss Devin Peterson and Miss Brittany. Thank you. Ferrari? Hi. My name is Ruby Ferrari, and I'm a sophomore at Northampton High School. I'm someone who prides myself on my work ethic when it comes to school, and the current environment at my school allows me to do well in that area. However, the recent budget cuts will have a severe effect on my and my peers' abilities to do well in this way. Teachers being cut means that class sizes will be raised from an average of 25 to 35. This will simply make it impossible for me to continue doing well in school the way that I have my past two years at NHS. Having this many students in one classroom will not allow teachers to give personal attention to many students at all, turning my high school classes into college-style lectures. This will not be beneficial to me or to the large majority of students who need help throughout courses, as it will simply not be plausible for teachers to give students the attention and help that they need and deserve to be able to excel in school. I'm also someone who has always been very involved in performing arts, specifically musical theater. I've been doing it for nearly 10 years, and it has always been a dream of mine to do it professionally after school. However, it was not until I experienced being in my first musical at NHS under director Dave Grout that I began to truly see it as a possibility. I believe that if I continue to work under him for my remaining time in high school, I could really go on to do this thing that I love so much for the rest of my life. His direction, professionalism, and attention to detail make not only our shows incredible, but the process behind them an experience I know I will always remember. However, if the school loses its theater program, the loss will be felt by the students of NHS, NHS families, and even regular people who are not involved with the school but who enjoy these incredible shows. 
Not being able to do theater at my own school <coughs> severely stunt potential that I and any other rising high schoolers may have. I don't know if I will really be able to get to the level that I need to be if I don't have these incredible opportunities to be in shows here. Specifically, I don't think that I will ever get to where I need to be to follow my lifelong ambition of going into theater professionally if I do not continue being mentored under the incredible David Grout. If this program is cut, it is removing that opportunity from these students in NHS who this program means so much to, other current students at this school, and generations of high schoolers to come. Thank you. Ezekiel Baskin on Zoom. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm Ezekiel Baskin. I currently live in Belchertown, and I'm a Northampton High School alum. Um, and I remember being here when I was a student about 10 years ago, having the same fight for arts and for fully funding the school budget. Um, I just want to say the theater program saved my life as a high school student. That's not an exaggeration. I do not think I would be here now without that program. Um, it was incredibly meaningful to me, and I work in a theater professionally now, um, but I don't, I don't think I would be here as a human alive today without that program. Um, and that's my experience, and I, a lot of students right now are sharing about their experiences with the theater program, but I think that is equally true for every support staff position, for every paraeducator, for every special ed position, each of these positions matters and each of them saves lives. And to cut any of them is, to my mind, is not acceptable. Um, I also want to just speak a little bit about your role, because I don't think that's come up a huge amount yet tonight. Um, and I'm a little bit of a policy nerd as well. Um, so, as I understand it, you, you can't solve the city's budget. That's not your role. Um, but what you can do is vote for the budget that students need and that the school district needs and let the city council do their job, which is to balance, balance the budget, to make hard decisions, to decide what departments get cut to what amount. But the budget that you vote for is a ceiling. Um, what you vote for, they can't add to it. All they can do is cut from it. And so if you pass a level service budget, which is what I hope you'll do, which is a 14% increase, that enables the city council to do their job. It allows them to weigh the schools, the needs of the schools with the needs of other departments and make the hard decisions that they need to make. Um, and if you pass a reduced budget, a 4% increase or an 8% increase, you are stopping the city council from being able to weigh weigh the full needs of the schools. And I believe a level service budget is the full needs of the schools. Um, and so I just want to say that what you pass is not the end of discussion, um, but it is the beginning of one. Um, and that I, I see your role as a school committee um, as not to cut down possibilities, but to create them. So I hope you'll, you'll do that tonight um, and be brave for all of the students now and in the past and in the future. Thank you so much. Next, Juliet Langer in the room. My name is Juliet Langer, and I live in Florence, and I am a senior at NHS. I'm speaking to the merit of the Northampton High School Theater Program and Dave Grout, who is the director, um, in response to the decision to include the termination in full or in part of his position as a result of the projected upcoming budget cuts. I have been heavily involved in the arts for my entire life and have worked with many people and directors, but none have impacted me as deeply as Dave Grout and the theater program at NHS. Even prior to coming to the high school, the theater department has always been one of its biggest draws. My friends and I would dream about coming to NHS to participate in the musicals and plays, um, and finally being able to take acting lessons there. The musical is one of the community's biggest events every single year and one of the most anticipated, drawing people together from all social groups and personalities in both performance and in attendance to the shows. To terminate the one position that holds the program together, including all acting and film-related classes, and then by extension the fall play and spring musical, is what I believe to be a critical mistake. The district is losing more kids in attendance every year to neighboring schools, and I know there has been much talk about enhancing the programs at the public schools already for this very reason. Uh, for the high school, I firmly believe that theater creates the community's soul. 
It is one of the staple things that draws people to the school and to get rid of it, I am certain, will drive more families away from the district. The love, passion, creativity, camaraderie, excitement, and hard work that it inspires is on par with that of the school sports teams, if not surpassing it. To terminate Dave's position is to terminate the heart of the high school's community. To essentially get rid of an entire program, especially such an influential one, especially in the arts, which are being put at so much jeopardy all over the country right now, would be a horrible loss. Next year, I am attending Vassar College and have made the decision to major in drama. That decision has concretely come from my time spent at the high school and under Dave's mentorship. Dave Grout has impacted my life as well as so many others in ways that truly cannot be put into words. He inspires his students and uplifts and supports them in every way he can. He encourages them to work hard and helps them strive towards living and working to their greatest potential. Dave has not made not only my high school theater experience but my full high school experience unforgettable. He is my highlight of attending NHS. His mentorship has helped me through a very hard time in my life, helping me believe in myself when I did not, and helping me find a confidence in myself and my abilities that was utterly lacking before. Dave is the pinnacle of what a good teacher should be, and terminating his position would be an insurmountable loss to the school. The huge success of the high school shows in the past two years can be so strongly accredited to Dave's skill as a director and the sheer amount of care he puts into his work. I understand that you find yourself faced with incredibly difficult choices at the behest of the looming budget cuts, but I vehemently implore you to put your support and invest in the arts and the theater department at the high school as a whole. Thank you very much. Ryan Jersky on Zoom. Uh, we're in Northampton. We have two kids at Jackson Street, one uh, in kindergarten and one in third grade. The Northampton community is angry, confused, and frustrated. It seems like instead of spending the past year working together to find a solution for our children, we've seen arguing, blaming, avoidance, and confusion about both information and who's responsible for what. Our city and school committee members have known about the situation for years. Why wasn't a collaborative working group between the school committee, city, school officials, educators, and the public formed years ago, or even last year, to meet regularly, to one, learn everything possible about this topic, two, hold com community and town hall style meetings all throughout the year to answer questions and brainstorm ideas, three, research and narrow actual solutions and four, present an action plan with one year, three year, five year and 10 year solutions. Perhaps this has happened and we just aren't aware, but based on the discussions going on right now, it seems that it hasn't. This meeting right here should be a culmination of that work. Instead, everyone here is anxiously waiting for your decision. And while a level services budget would certainly be ideal for all ch our children and, and educators, we're worried that not enough time has been spent working on creative interim solutions. It was suggested that perhaps we just aren't at that stage in the process yet. But we've asked school committee and city council members, the mayor and principals, if the line items can be altered after the budget is passed. And from the few who responded back to us, the answer seems to be no. Please correct us if that's wrong. But if that's the case, it seems we need those solutions on the table immediately as part of the discussion tonight. For example, we have proposed, both in meetings and in writing, a fourth, fifth grade combo class next year at Jackson Street which has received a positive response from some Jackson Street teachers, the principal, and community member Agna. This would reduce next year's fourth and fifth grade class sizes at Jackson Street from 27 students to 21 and would save a teacher. Please support this idea, other creative solutions that will enable class sizes to stay manageable and to spare as many educators as possible. Perhaps most disheartening though, these specific cuts at Jackson Street are aimed directly at a co the cohort of children who did kindergarten and first grade over Zoom at the peak of COVID. These kids are already behind and struggling in many ways, academically, socially, and beyond. We just keep thinking to ourselves, is this who we are as a community? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Karen Hidalgo. Karen Hidalgo in the room. My name is Karen Hidalgo. I live in Northampton and I'm a school counselor at Northampton High School. I want to briefly review um, some of the history at Northampton High School. 
for the first four or five years that I was at Northampton High School, Dr. Provost was adding much needed staff at the elementary level. And he said that secondary's turn would be next. And our turn at Northampton High School never came. We should really be asking for increased funding at Northampton High School. But I'm only asking you for no cuts at this time. We can't afford cuts at Northampton High School. In our district, our costs are up because student needs are increasing. Student needs were increasing before the pandemic, and that has, they're increasing even more since the pandemic. And we finally have a fair contract. Um, I think there are ideas out there about how to save money. We've talked about the foundation formula. We've talked about charter school funding, which I see as taxation without representation because I don't get to talk to a school committee of the charter schools, um, but they're spending my city money. Um, we have two school districts in Northampton. I'm not sure why we're the only town or city in the state, as I understand it, that has that, can't be efficient. We can talk about regionalizing, we can talk about consolidating schools. I know we're asking Smith for money. There's things we can do. Um, we are right now in a crisis situation in the schools. If we make the proposed cuts, um, if we make them at NHS, we'll have, we make them everywhere, but we'll have larger classes, fewer courses offered, fewer services. This will harm our students and it will depress enrollment. This is what reserve funds are for. This is what overrides are for to maintain key basic services, to avoid extreme consequences. Please vote for a level services budget. And um, one final note, enrollment is not down at Northampton High School. It comes up a lot that enrollment is down in the district. It's not down at Northampton High School. It may go down if these cuts go through, but it is not down yet. We are steady at 900. <laughs> Camden Siegel on Zoom. Hello, my name is Camden Siegel. I'm a resident of Northampton and a Bridgetree School parent of a kindergartner. Um, I'm just here to ask the school committee to pass a level service budget. There's no better investment or safe make than to properly fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next is August Santos in the room. Um, hello, valued members of the school committee. My name is August Santos. I'm from Northampton, and I'm a junior at NHS. I didn't finish this testimony until just a few minutes ago because I, quite frankly, haven't had the words to describe how scared I am about the future of NHS with these cuts in mind. As many have said, anything other than a level services budget is unsustainable. However, I'm coming to you today, uh, coming to you as a member of NHS theater today. About a year ago, I remember preparing a monologue for Dave Grout's acting class. It was from a chorus line, and it was about a character named Paul who was struggling to accept his identity as a queer person. That was my first time talking openly about queer experience in performance, and I was understandably very nervous. But I wouldn't have felt safer anywhere else than in the classroom of David Grout, full of kids like me. Not once did I feel judged, rejected, or excluded. Mr. Grout fosters an environment for countless queer kids every day. I know so many people that have found themselves through stage and would be lost without the one place that they can express themselves authentically. Cutting this program would be detrimental to the artistic development of a large population of NHS students. I guarantee people in this meeting and people listening saw Freaky Friday last month and felt the magic of our hard work firsthand. Over 100 wonderful students were involved with the creation of this production, a huge percentage of our student body. With these cuts, you won't be able to experience that same joy next spring. You won't be able to laugh, relate, and cry to the work we spent so much time on. With everything in our lives, whenever, when everything in our lives feels certain, uncertain, we can turn to the stage. We can take an acting class or do the musical work with Mr. Grout where we feel we actually belong. It sounds silly, but it really is a life-changing program. I can confidently say that after five years of performing, the theater, Susan Dillard, and David Grout are huge reasons I am comfortable in my queerness. I, expect, I express myself in ways I never thought possible through the stage, and I know so many others feel the same. Let us prove to you that the theater department is worth the space in the budget based on the productions we just put on and will continue to put on. The public outcry and upset you will receive if this change is made is astro astronomical. I ask the superintendent, the mayor, and this committee to remember who this is affecting, an already underrepresented, underrepresented community of kids. 
Mr. Grout, who works tirelessly to give us the space to be ourselves. Parents who want to see their kids perform. For anyone listening, I beg of you, do not let the stage at NHS go dark. Thank you. Thank you, August. Josh Feldman on Zoom. Good evening. Josh Feldman, dad of three kids in the schools, Ward 3, Northampton resident. Um, gratitude to our public leaders for engaging in a complex and difficult conversation about the current and future reality for our schools. A reminder to all of us that budgets are ultimately values and that what we decide tonight and in future conversations about budgets are not just numbers on a page, but have real lives attached to them, like we've heard so eloquently from so many of our student leaders this evening. We know that there's no easy choices to make and that there's a hard road ahead in how the city and the schools navigate the current financial realities, but let's let education be a core value of Northampton. And within that, let's not only have a short-term conversation, but think long-term about not just where we are, but what thriving can look like for our students, our teachers, our schools, and ultimately the entire city. This is a proposition where everyone rises. Gratitude to all of you for grappling with this and encouragement to pass a level service budget this evening. Callum McLaughlin in the room. Hi, uh, my name is Callum McLaughlin. I live in Hadley, and this is my second year teaching at Jackson Street School. And I took this job for the same reason I imagine a lot of you took your jobs. It's because I wanted to make a difference in the lives of kids and help the future generation. But recently, I've had to ask myself what it is that we think we're doing here. Last year, I worked with a special needs student who had severe emotional and psychological issues. He was unable to participate in the mainstream classroom, and there was essentially nowhere in the school for him to go. Anytime my supervisor and I asked for assistance from the higher-ups, we were either ignored or told that services he needed did not exist in this district. Every night, I went home racked with guilt, wondering what we were, if what we were doing to this child was tantamount to torture and imagining all the ways he would suffer in the future because of that. Looking back, I try to give myself grace because I was a first-time teacher in way over my head, but I still feel guilt, carry guilt about all the ways this child was failed. But frankly, I feel that the guilt I feel should be shared by everyone here. I feel strongly that these budget cuts will do to every student here what was done to my child last year. What might be a sensible budget decision for you will take away the future of a generation of kids that have already been traumatized enough. Whatever you do, the rest of us will have to live with your choice. I just wanted to say that during my time here, I have experienced this administration solely as an antagonistic force, providing us with nothing and then scolding us when the inevitable happens. You can make these cuts, and if, I, if you do, I expect you will blame us, the student-facing staff, for all the bad things that will happen. And bad things will happen. But when they do happen, I want you to remember this night and remember that you could have done something, but you chose not to. Thank you. Jessica on Zoom. Hi. Um, my name is Shahana. Uh, I live in Northampton, Massachusetts, and I am a junior currently at NHS. Um, I wanted to thank the school board for their time today. Um, I am a part of the NHS theater department, and I love Dave Grout just as much as the next person. But I also wanted to bring up some of the other issues that these budget cuts will pose. Um, I wanted to start by talking quickly about how the school is suggesting having kids take online AP classes uh, because a, some AP classes are getting cut or proposed to be getting cut because of the school budget. Um, I want to highlight we already did that. We did that for two to three years. Um, and I think everybody collectively can agree that it went really horribly, um, especially I think putting high level AP classes as the online classes is really failing our students and failing to give them proper education. I also want to highlight that we have become really dependent 
on the community college and Smith College classes, which are not available to all students for transportation and financial reasons. Um, and really, we want our teachers. We don't want college professors. We don't want online AP classes. We want the teachers that we have in the school. We love our teachers. Our teachers are an invaluable resource to us, and it is a disservice to students to take that resource away from us. On a similar note, I want to talk about electives. Taking away teachers means taking away electives. Uh, electives are an invaluable piece of the Northampton High School community and of communities throughout the school district. Teachers who teach electives teach uh, electives about minorities, as mentioned by the student union. And I think that it is a disservice to our community, a disservice to our students to take away the electives that highlight the experiences of minorities. I wanted to spe specifically highlight the class Women and Gender. This is a class I took last year in my sophomore year, and it's currently being taught by Ms. Fontaine. This class is really a class that I think should be required for all students because it provides invaluable knowledge about women and gender. And I think that it is a class that highlights minority experiences. And it is unacceptable for a class like that to be cut. Finally, I wanted to quickly talk about uh, a guidance counselor being cut. As a current junior and a rising senior, a guidance counselor is an integral person in my college experience and in my college finding experience. If I don't have access to a guidance counselor when I need it, this is going to heavily impact how I get into college. Guidance counselors are really an un, are an incredibly important part of students finding what they're going to do after high school, whether it's college or not. And taking away a resource like a guidance counselor is really failing our students, failing to prepare them for the real world after high school. Thank you. Okay, Deborah, did you want to come back up? Um, my name is Deborah, and I live Deborah Thompson, and I live in Florence, Massachusetts. Um, can't read without my glasses, so I can't see anybody. So sorry if I focus in on one of you. Um, I'm appalled that I have to stand here tonight in front of our community in defense of our schools, students, and staff in a city that has for decades attracted many of its residents by its purported progressive nature. Not only are we cutting the programs that make our schools unique, we're fighting to keep the current, bare, questionably legal minimum guidelines of supportive or special education. While we should be the pioneers of groundbreaking forward-thinking techniques, arts, and innovation, instead we're left to fight for scraps. Teachers, many of whom are city residents, are facing a pay rate freeze to their already, from what I understand, non-competitive salaries, doubled with what looks like for residents having to vote for a 2.5% override to fund the city's deficits after not getting an increase in pay. So thank you, teachers. Um, we need to attract new talented faculty, staff, and residents to Northampton. Everyone here recognizes this. But the budget and city priorities leave a message to the young people of Northampton otherwise. Many of the proposed cuts to the education budget will directly affect the safety and education opportunities for our most vulnerable students especially those who do often do not have a voice or feel comfortable or safe bringing it to the table. Elementary and grade-wide paraprofessionals, adjustments, and guidance counselors often take up the majority of slack and are the first line of defense for many of these students and families. <laughs> Undercutting, thank you, I'm just gonna keep going because of time. Um, Undercutting these essential support positions will not only affect the students that they are servicing, but the community as a whole will be affected if anxiety, supports, and safe, the safety needs of the schools are not met. Anyone dropping off their kids at NHS see the ambulances in the morning? I mean, the uh, police cars in the morning a lot? Like, what the heck? Um, sorry, um, where am I? Okay, um, recently, two Northampton High School adjustment counselors saved a life. They were able to do so because of the strong bonds they had already formed with vulnerable students who felt comfortable coming to them when they got a suicide notes in their phone when they weren't supposed to have their phone in class. <laughs> um, they sprang into quick action. 
I'd ask any of you in the room who have ever lost somebody in this way, what price would you pay to have that person back in your life? Is it worth the annual salary of one adjustment counselor? These positions are already strapped too thin and undervalued. All right, I'm going to power talk. Um, I'm sick of hearing that providing the legal bare minimum necessities for special education has caused a budget burden to the Northampton schools. Providing inclusive education in the least restrictive environment is the law, and our district was just catching up to that. I would challenge that in some situations and in the high school, we're not even really doing it. We, we are certainly not launching a new innovative special education program. I was surprised to see this week that the latest cuts Time. also offered a nebulous counselor to be cut and the innovative uh, IT and health counselor pathways position, those positions are in transition services and are legally required to be fulfilled and met. I'm sorry, I'm getting thrown by my time. I apologize, but- You're almost a minute over. 42% of those students in innovation pathways are ELL special education. Okay, I should just stop. Um, I'm glad we're building a resilience hub because quite frankly, when the youth of this city is not met, they're gonna need it. Thank you. Rebecca Greenberg on Zoom. Hello, we are students of Jackson Street School. And my name is Soleil and I'm Toba. Um, yeah, you can go first. And we are speaking because we're in fourth grade and next year we're, we're going to have 28 kids in each class. It's going to be really hard for us to have any individual like attention at all. And I feel that all kids should have a little bit of it. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's going to be harder to learn because there's going to be less teachers, way more kids, and it's just going to be way too overwhelming. And like, it's just going to be more, it's going to be more complicated for the teachers to pay attention to what each individual student needs. And there's going to be more students that need supervision at a time. I think it would be, it would be really, um, it wouldn't be a good situation for the teachers because it's really important for each student to get the attention and like, and like they need to get like individual attention to um, know like what kind of help they need or if they need like extra, like if they need extra help or if they're good with the work they have. And um, another thing that I'm kind of annoyed about is that Archery this year was one of the funnest experiences I've ever had as a student at Jackson Street. And it's going to get taken away with the budget cuts if the budget cuts um, get appealed tonight. So I'm really sad about that because I really want to have that experience next year. And I want every single student that wants to have that experience that hasn't had that experience yet to have that experience whenever they get to fourth and fifth grade. Yeah, um, like kindergarten, first, second, third Grade. Yeah, third grade, yeah. We'll all not get to experience that learning opportunity. And I think that's really disappointing that we get to do it like one year and that met, that it was like one of the funnest things, yeah, most interesting things that we've ever done. And like no one else will be able to do it that's in third, second, first, or kindergarten. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Michael Braidman in the room. Hello, uh, my name is Michael Braidman. I live in Florence. Um, I'm here to talk to you tonight as a parent, as a teacher, um, as a person who works in the arts, um, and as a taxpayer. Um, I've been living in the town of Northampton for about 18 years. Uh, I've been teaching uh, in a neighboring district for over 20 years. Um, I happen to also run the theater program there, so a lot of what the students have said tonight has really resonated with me. Um, I have a student um, who is in eighth grade at JFK. Um, I read every Parent Square message. Every one. <laughs> 
So I like to think that I have some information about what's going on around here. And it definitely seems like a lot of really amazing stuff is happening in all of our schools in this district. I'm really happy with the education that my child has been receiving. And I'm really excited about the education they're going to receive next year at the high school. But obviously, that really depends on what happens here tonight. And what is happening so far here tonight is completely unconscionable. This should not be taking place. The public should not have to come and beg for public school funding. Everything I could tell you tonight has already been said more eloquently by a lot of people before me. Ultimately, your job as the school committee is to find the funding and to propose the funding that will fully fund the schools so that the schools can operate to the best of their possible capacity. So please stand up and vote for a level fund budget tonight. Thank you. Elizabeth Bowen on Zoom. Who was just called? Me. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Bowen and I live in Florence. I want to preface this by saying that I teach at Leeds and I love my job. I love my students. I love my colleagues. My own two children are students there and are having a wonderful experience. The anger that I feel at this farce is, is deep and personal, but also like disgusted by the lack of pragmatic realism. The superintendent says we must live within our means, but a city's public schools are not the equivalent of spending $50 more than you planned at Target. Our moral, ethical, and perhaps most important, legal obligations to our special education and ELL students are not optional purchases. Our children's safety and education are not extra seasonal decor. I do not understand or respect this strategy of terrorizing us with threats of cuts that would result in lawsuits that are more expensive than the cuts. Is the goal to drive down enrollment in our schools? I don't see how that would benefit the committee, and yet you all seem to be carefully crafting headlines designed to accomplish that. Is your goal, is the city's goal, to only offer special education services to students whose parents have the means to hire a lawyer to enforce their IEP? I would hope you're better people than that. Is your goal to return to the state that we were in when I arrived in the district a decade ago and had to spend PD days in special training with DESE because our MCAS scores were so abysmal? No, that doesn't make sense either. So what, what is the goal? Because being Part of being a responsible adult is fulfilling your moral, ethical, and legal obligations. I don't get to decide not to pay my taxes because my grocery and utility bills have skyrocketed. I pick up more hours working after school and reassess my priorities. NPS is at the top of my priority list, despite being a mere parent and employee. I'm incredibly disappointed that it's not even on the city's list of priorities. I could go through the list of proposed cuts and point out how they will inevitably lead to more students requiring special education services and a delay in students who need services being identified. I could point out that this will result in more affluent families opting out and more administrative turnover. I could point out that pre-pandemic, former superintendent John Provost was moved to tears when telling then school committee member Laura Fallon about how overworked our elementary school principals were in a budget meeting pre-COVID. Cutting the tiered support specialist would be cutting what little support our principals have. But at the end of the day, my points are all true and thus things you will have heard from a dozen other constituents. I'll remind the school committee members that at the end of the day, their obligations are to our students, to the children of Northampton. There is no reason for you to enable the mayor trying to balance the budget on the backs of our children, our city's most vulnerable residents, and at the expense of their future. says Giselle Ohm. Is that, is that right? Hi, I'm Giselle. I live in Northampton. Um, sorry, I'm short. Okay. 
Um, I'm part of the Northampton High School uh, Student Union, as well as some other groups, and two of which I will be talking about. Um, the first thing that I will talk about is the healthcare pathway offered at the high school. This is one of two pathways um, offered and run by the Innovation and Pathways Coordinator, Bo Clark. Bo was hired this past fall and has dove headfirst into making the healthcare and IT pathway internships and work study um, a new and improved experience for all students. Um, their position is now at risk of being cut. Um, these pathways are a unique opportunity to students and offers extensive hands-on experience in specialized career fields. Um, I have always known that I wanted to go into the health care field, um, but other p of my peers do not know that when they get to high school or during their high school career. Um, the pathway and internships offered at the high school are an incredible way for students to explore what's possible for them outside of um, school and when they graduate. Cutting these pathways and internship opportunities fails to give students opportunities um, that Northampton is prided for. The second group I would like to talk about is Youth for Equity in Action, a Northampton High School club sponsored by the Northampton Department of Health and Human St Services. Um, our main goals are to center youth voices and decisions that affect our lives and to make positive change in the school and community related to health equity. Um, just based off, the, off of those goals, I would urge you to all take the voices um, and experiences that you've heard from the students very heavily um, because we know what's going on in our lives the best. Um, it may not seem like what a lot of people are talking about has to do with health, um, but actually everything that has been said affects students, teachers, and parents' health. Um, I'd also like to mention one of um, Youth for Equity in Action's projects um, that we are working on right now, which is getting restorative practices into the Northampton Public Schools districts, which a few um, of the school committee members have attended planning meetings for. Um, restorative practices are a framework and set of strategies about building authentic relationships and non-punitive ways of repairing harm, and its roots come from indigenous traditions. Um, by cutting funding, instead of increasing it, getting restorative practices into the schools is less and less likely than it already is. Um, why is cutting these opportunities even on the table? By su not supporting a level funding budget, um, our city will fail our students, teachers, and the community as a whole. Thank you. Winston Campbell on Zoom. Hello? Hi, my name is Winston Campbell. I'm a fourth grade student at Bridge Street School. I think that we should reconsider our budget cuts because the kids in our schools are the adults of the future. If I'm going to be mayor someday, I deserve an education. Someone in my class could become president, and sure, the chances are small, but we should be able to have that chance instead of no chance at all. I think we haven't had a librarian since October, and I think that we need a higher budget so we can hire a librarian for my school. Most of our classrooms have books for average and below, but not above grade level. That wouldn't be a problem if the library was open, but it has, because it has high level, higher levels of reading, but we can't check them out or have help finding them. I hope to see a change in the budget and make my school a better place for learning. I cannot wait to be a part of the amazing theater program at NHS. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Winston. Adrian Barman in the room. My name is Adrian. I live in Florence. I'm a seventh grader at JFK Middle School, and I think a budget cut would badly affect a lot of aspects of school right now and for the future. I'm looking forward to having a full high school experience with good teachers, uh, just like my sister Willa, who is a sophomore at NHS. If there's a cut in teachers at the high school, the classes will be larger, which not only puts more stress on the teachers, but also causes a worse learning environment for us. If resources are cut, such as guidance and important teachers that work there are cut, that can cause students to struggle more. Thanks for listening.
Amelia Durbin on Zoom. Hi, everyone. My name is Amelia. I am a resident of Northampton, Massachusetts, and a sophomore at Northampton High School. Um, and I just want to briefly say that the budget deficit we see today is an example of how our schools and how public education in general is too often not prioritized. Um, the budget situation that we see today would not be the case if not for poor decisions and neglect of our public school system. And so tonight, I encourage you to consider how your actions and your decisions are going to impact or fuel the, the systemic issues and systems that have brought us here in the first place. And I encourage you to consider how your actions and your decisions tonight and for years to come are going to impact the youth in our community and the students in our schools and every adult that puts down so much to be there and to support and to encourage our youth in our community to become the citizens that we need to see. Um, yeah, thank you for my, thank you for your time. Justin, uh, Justin Giannisian? Sorry if I got that wrong. Giannisian. Good evening. My name is Justin Janison. I'm a resident of Northampton. I'm a parent of two kids in the Northampton schools. I work at Jackson Street School. I've been an educator for 23 years. And I'm highly disappointed that we are here having this conversation. Um, the first thing that I'd like to say is thank you to the students who have talked tonight, because they said it way better than I'll ever say it. And their voices are the ones that matter the most. What I'd like to say is that it's really clear to me as a resident here that the priorities in the city are backwards. That the city does not prioritize our schools and our students, and that's really disheartening, both as a parent and as a resident, and most importantly as an educator who cares about our kids. So I'm asking you, and I'm begging you, to think about voting for level funding. I'm also asking you to just think about the futures of our kids and our city and what's gonna happen to our schools when other people start looking at our community and what our schools are have to offer or don't have to offer and start to think otherwise about coming here. I happen to love this place. I think the people sitting in this room like this place. You expect teachers to do well. I expect us to do well as educators. You all need to do better. Thank you. Uh, my name is Amy Sidoti. Um, I live in Northampton. I have two kids in, or three kids in the school system, and I teach second grade at Ryan Road. I truly believe everyone in this room wants the best for our city and our schools, but we disagree on how to get there with limited funds. These high school students are impressive. I want to also share the perspective of classroom teachers and the youngest students who cannot be here tonight because it's past their bedtime. I'm going to channel my big feelings by using I statements as taught by our guidance counselor, Becky Conley. <laughs> I have been to the meetings, I have read the slideshows, referred back to them, written letters. I am still so confused about what you all are even about to vote on. I have heard, <clears throat> seen, and read so many opposing statements about what the cuts and what will happen in each school. I wish I had suggestions on how to solve these budget issues, but I don't. I do have an important pr perspective on exactly how this will affect second graders in our district. I, I feel angry, worried, and scared because my colleagues at Bridge Street will be losing behavioral support and intervention next year. I was able to observe a literacy block of theirs a few months ago, and it brought tears to my eyes because it was beautiful, efficient, and really great teaching. Kids moved around the room seamlessly for an hour. Support teachers and ESPs came in and out, giving support in the classroom, as well as moving kids to other locations to support them. I got a little misty because I know how hard that is. The needs in those rooms were high. It feels like Bridge Street has the highest needs in our district currently. I need you not to cut positions from this school. Next year, they will no longer be able to pull literacy groups in the best way for kids because they will not have the staff to do so. I need you not to cut any positions from this school. I feel angry, worried, and scared for the students and my colleagues at Jackson Street, JFK, and the high school, whose class sizes are about to jump up by, in some cases, 30%. 
I know teaching second grade with anywhere above 22 students is a terrible idea. There is simply no way to effectively teach that many kids foundational reading and math skills. They will lose their ability to connect with their students well. They will lose the ability to teach with small groups and differentiation. They will need to teach to the masses instead of what each child needs simply because of space and classroom management. I am worried, angry, and scared about my colleagues and students at Ryan Road and Leeds um, where we will have to do work with, uh, with fewer special ed teachers, ESPs, interventionists, and office staff. I hope the school committee understands that by cutting these teachers, we will be qualifying more special education students over the next few years. It has been proven over and over and over that early intervention and services in the early grades make a difference. If we do not, the tower of learning has gaps, holes, and shaky pieces. It will fall, and it will fall hard when the students get to fourth, fifth, and middle school grade levels. I need you not to cut any positions at these schools. I understand the city is running low on funds, but guess what? So are we. We have withheld raises for more than 10 years to help the city. I need you to not make any of these cuts for the budget next year. It will have implications that will last for years. I'm Beth Bellavance Grace. I live in Northampton, and I have a student of mine here that I would like to share the mic with. Great. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. She's a lot shorter. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Claire, and I'm in fourth grade at JSS, and I live in Northampton, MA. Um, and that's why I told my mom that I needed to speak today. I'll be in fifth grade next year, and I was very excited until I heard that I would probably be in a class with 27 other people, and I don't want that to happen. It's not, it's not going to be fun to be stuffed in a class with 28 people, 28 des desks, and ju just one teacher to control everyone. There are people that have a hard time following the rules. There are people that need extra help. And if you think that one, maybe along with a helper teacher, will be able to keep order of a class in 28 people, I'm pretty sure that you were wrong. Also, I'm really disappointed because I loved archery and it's a very exciting unit in PE and it won't happen if there are 28 people in a class. It's a really fun sport, but it needs a lot of safety precaution and requires everyone to be quiet and listening at all times. This sport is only available for fourth and fifth graders, and all third graders and um, grades below that, including my sister, have probably heard about how fun and how special it is to be able to, to do archery. And now, if this budget cut, pa cut passes, they're not going to be able to do archery, and that isn't fair. Um, also, lots of teachers are going to be cut, and that's a problem. And I also heard that the CPI team will have less time with kids to talk about um, their emotions. And when I walk down the hall, I see kids who are having a hard time or crying, but the CPI team is there, and the CPI team helps them calm down. And with less time, they're not going to be able to talk to kids longer, and I don't know who will help them. I'm speaking tonight because I'm the one who has to deal with this and watch this. You won't have to sit in a room with 27 other people. You won't have to lose country, something that is so fun. And you won't have to have teachers that you really like or want to be able to meet cut. But I will. Thank you. So it's totally hard to follow that. Do we have any time left there? You have 45 oh, yeah, 45 seconds. Yeah. Good. I have a four and a half minute speech here. <laughs> Um, so my name is Beth Philavans Grace. Uh, I've um, been in, involved with Northampton Public Schools since my oldest started 28 years ago. I've had three kids graduate from Northampton High School. I've seen many of my students in here tonight and on Zoom, and I'm very moved. And they're very eloquent, eloquent, and elegant. <laughs> and um, I, I just want to say uh, I, I started in kindergarten as an inter, as an um, instructional aide. And, and 22 years ago, and I've worked over the years in so many different aspects at Jackson Street School. It's an incredible school, and the cuts that are coming down the line are going to like make it so, so hard for the staff 
the teachers and the students. And I'm begging you to please level funding. Um, I just spent 21 years as a paraprofessional and I, thanks to Northampton Public Schools, I, they helped me go back to grad school. Um, I, this is my first year as a teacher and it's my favorite job in my whole life. 61 years old, it's a new career and I'm really sad that I'll be losing my job. Thank you. Tasha Remini is next. <coughs> Hi, my name is Tasha Remini, and I'm the math interventionist at Bridge Street School. I luckily don't have to fear for my position to be lost because I'm federally funded through Title I, but I have Title I. I have math interventionist positions who are being will be lost at other schools if this goes through. But I'm actually not here to talk about the interventionist positions for reading or math. I want to talk about tiered support specialists. And I want to invite you all in to 30 minutes of today's day. I was picking, I had a paraprofessional bring three students to my room because I have nine lessons back to back. Here come my three students come down the hall. The paraprofessional does a fabulous job proactively letting me know that one of my students was not, was not regulated and ready for the lesson. So we go down the hallway together and we go to the PE room for an adaptive PE class that just finished. My kids run the course one time, now we're ready to go for our math lesson. We come back in for our math lesson. I have my three kids who now have access to education because they have a small setting. And one of them is still not ready for learning. But we can handle this. I've never had to call to your support specialist because I have a small group. And I can meet their needs because there's only three of them in front of me. But today I couldn't because this child had more needs than he's had before. So I was able to call the office and say, I need some support because in seven minutes now, this child needs to return to the general education classroom where 22 students' education is going to be disrupted if this child doesn't have their needs met. Our wonderful, one of our wonderful two tiered support specialists came to my room joined my class for our lesson. This child was not shamed. This child did not have to leave my table. This child had their needs met at my table skillfully while I continued to instruct the other two students. And this child, when they were ready, were able to then voice and say, I'm ready now. And the tiered support specialist moved further away from the child further away from the child, standing in the doorway, ready to support that child as they transitioned back to the classroom setting. Because we all know if we are not regulated, we cannot learn. And we have so many students and adults in our buildings who are dysregulated. And we need as many supports as we can receive. And I fear that the people that I called to support one student, and I'll tell you that when this special tiered support interventionist came to my classroom, she did not just help one student. She helped 42 students in that seven minute, minute interaction. Yep, I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds because three teachers got supported, two general ed classroom teachers and myself. I could keep teaching. That child and 22 children in one room and 20 children in the other room did not have their education interrupted because they had access to skilled support. Please do not cut any position in Northampton. We all deserve specialized support. Thank you. Sasha Moore-Smith. Sasha? Hi, I'm Sasha Moore-Smith. I'm a paraeducator at Jackson Street School. Um, and I'm going to talk to something similar to the last speaker. Um, I support kids that need more support than just me, often, frequently. Um, and I also have a walkie with me all day. I hear all the support calls that go on at my school, and I regularly hear, um, I'm on a support call, I'm on a support call, I'm on a support call, and the office is calling the nurse, 
They're calling the counselor away from services with their students um, because we already don't have enough people. And the cuts that are being proposed, the 4% increase, are going to take away our tiered support, who is incredibly skilled. He has been a tiered support for, I think, like 30 years. He has taught me so much in my brief time working here. And I would not be half as competent at my job if he wasn't working here. You're also taking away a paraeducator who's interning as a tiered support. So next year, we're probably losing over 50% of the minutes that is spent on supporting students with these proposed cuts. It will not be possible for us to provide the same quality of education if these cuts happen. Um, the richest, the wealthiest students will be able to leave and go to charter or private schools, while the students with the lowest income families, the students who have the greatest needs, will suffer. So I know in Northampton, we all like to talk about how progressive we are, but you all have to take responsibility for your actions. Actions speak louder than words, and right now, the cuts that you all are proposing are going to harm the people who need the most help, the kids who need the most help. So live up to your values. Vote for a level funding of services. Thank you. Isabella Utley Rosado. I'm Isabella Utley Rosado. I use they, them pronouns. And I'm a paraeducator at Jackson Street School. I live in Amherst. I work as a one-on-one -on -one student with a nonverbal student who cannot advocate for himself yet. Um, these cuts are going to hurt the most marginalized students, kids of color, kids that are disabled, kids that are neurodivergent, kids whose identities intersect at all of those points. My job. Part of my job is to help him engage appropriately with his peers, but it's also to help his peers engage appropriately with him to see his value. And right now, I don't think that you all see his value. <laughs> these kids are gonna hear about these cuts. They're gonna see that you don't care about kids like him. Brown kids that can't speak on their own, kids that can't learn on their own, and they're going to see that you don't value them and they're not gonna value him. They're not gonna value kids like him. You need to fund education in this town. Michael Taver. Michael Taver, T-A-V-E-R, I think. Um, hello, my name is Michael Tower, and I'm from Northampton, Massachusetts, as well as a freshman at Northampton High School. Today I'll be addressing the proposed cut of Dave Grout, the theater teacher, and offer a student perspective on how the NHS theater department has changed my life. The night before my first day at Northampton High School a few months ago, I was miserable, terrified, violently nervous, and any other synonym you can think of for scared. But I walked into my third period class on the first day to see Dave Grout behind a computer in the black box, and unbeknownst to me, my life changed forever. To be completely honest with you, I've never really been a popular person, or ever really felt like I fit in, but at Freaky Friday musical rehearsals and acting classes run by Dave, for the first time in my life, I felt safe in a school building. That would have never been possible without Dave. Of course, I am devastated at the possibility that I will never feel that again, but I'm even more distraught at the fact that if I was born just a year later, I might have never been able to experience that at all. At the last show, I remember telling a fellow actor, well, this is our last time performing together, and he said, don't say that, we still have next year. Every day I get more and more scared that I was right. Every student deserves the chance to feel like they belong at school. Every student deserves Dave Grout. In these past years, I've lost a lot of faith in our school system. Don't make me lose my hope. Thank you. Anna Marie still here? Hi, my name is Anna Marie. I live in Northampton, and I'm a freshman at NHS. I'm here to talk about the theater program at NHS and how it's impacted me. 
When I first got to NHS, I was very anxious entering a new environment with new people, more intense classes, and overall, it was terrifying. I went through my classes the on the first day, getting to know them, and one of those classes was Dave's acting class. When I first entered, I was extremely shy and afraid to talk to others. I didn't think I was going to do good in the class. Over time, I started to talk to more people and felt more comfortable in the class. Later into the the semester, I had a very emotional talk with Dave where he told me he was proud of how much I improved and made me feel so much more confident in myself. His class felt like a safe space and it made me want to continue my passion for theater. So I auditioned for Freaky Friday and words cannot describe how wonderful an experience it was. I met so many caring and talented people that share the same passion as I did. And a lot of my friends told me through Dave's theater class in the musical I had grown into a much more confident actor and person. And I would have never thought I'd make so many new friends and grow as much as I did. And I'm thankful for having David grow as a teacher and having this experience. Thinking about how people will not have, be able to have that same opportunity to experience that has me heartbroken. By coming to NHS's theater program, you are getting rid of an important part of this vibrant art-focused community and the passions of so many students in our school. And I hope you will consider this while voting. Thank you. Jade Rousseau, are you a student? Are you here and a student? Jade? All right, Jade, let's close it out. Good evening. My name is Jade Rousseau. I live in Florence, and I'm a senior at Northampton High School. While I may not know the full details of the whole budget, what I have learned is that if, it, if implemented, it would be a terrible decision for our schools. In my time at Northampton High School, elective classes have given me so many experiences I'm thankful for in, um, in music, technology, and especially the IT Pathways program where I've learned so many skills about how to write a resume, cover letter, have a in job interview, which will be so valuable for me in the future. And my relationships I've made with teachers have been invaluable and Increased class sizes and cutting teachers will make this much harder for more students to have in the future. So I'm asking you, please pass a level services budget. I understand that you, this position is difficult and that there's no real good option, but I ask you to do whatever you can to make this situation right. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We're a little bit over, um, but I'm glad we got a couple extra students in there. Thank you everyone who came to speak um, this evening. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, so we are, we'll move up uh, item F under new business to do the vote to approve the FY25 school budget, and then we'll go back and do the rest of the agenda. So, and Dr. Bonner, did you okay, want um, to lead off? Uh, yes. <clears throat> so thank you to the community, staff, caregivers, and students who have been speaking vehemently about the concerns of next year's operating budget and express invade feelings to reductions. Your emails, letters, calls, and personal conversations are duly noted and a part of the public record. So how did we get to this fiscal cliff? The budget gap that we are experiencing has been years in the making and is a result of multiple factors. Overuse of school choice revenue beyond sustainable levels, increase in staffing from fiscal year 2018 to 2024. The last union contract agreement increases salaries exceeding city <coughs> revenue growth, reliance on ESSER funds for recurring expenses, Pandemic-related stressors, outside factors such as Chapter 70 and Student Opportunity Act. For the past 10 years, the city has provided a minimum of 3% increase to Northampton Public Schools since the inception of the Fiscal Stability Plan. Prior to this fiscal policy, there were years of volatility in which the appropriations was less than a 1% increase. The first view budget of 7.97%, or my recommended budget, was presented in December. It was developed collaboratively with administrators and directors with the notion of the city's fiscal target of 
This budget maintains priorities that are in alignment with the district's goals that are reflective of our focus on equity, teaching and learning, culture and climate, and managing operations. Keeping with these priorities, the budget maintains current academic programs by integrating current resources, target classroom sizes to 25 plus or minus, reduce staffing by reviewing the master schedules in schools, reallocated resources to provide extended services to our students who are underperforming, provide a rigorous curriculum and maintain support staff currently in place in our schools and classrooms maintain special education services of current identified students. Clarifications to the public and the misleading information that is surfacing. The first few budgets, bottom line, is $40,778,585. This includes, I repeat, includes the $1.2 million allocation that was given last year to address the gap, the first piece of misinformation that's floating out there. Within the first view budget, there are suggested reductions, and Bobby Jones will take you through those recommendations shortly. <coughs> A list of additional reductions that works off of the first view budget was compiled to meet an increase of only 4%. This was prepared at the request of the school committee during the April 1st meeting. This recommended cuts, these recommended cuts impact support staff and are not direct cuts to classrooms. For instance, academic support teachers are not directly assigned to a classroom. They are interventionists. The bottom line for a 4% increase is $39,276,377. There is mention of a third option, which was not presented to the school committee that is surfacing. That is a 13.34% or 17% that excludes the 1.2 million one-time allocation that is being labeled level service budget. This was generated from the original request of administrators during budget talks and was the starting point to ascertain what we needed to do to achieve a fiscally responsible budget. The bottom line for this untenable budget is $42,805,908. A true level service budget would be the continuation of current services with contractual increases. This cannot occur due to the removal of positions tied to ESSER funding. As the school committee is tasked with tonight's vote, we can look to other surrounding districts who have voted on their school budgets. Ludlow, that has an enrollment of 22, um, over 2,200 students. In fiscal 24, the district reduced their um, staffing by 20 full-time positions. This current fiscal year that they will be going into in terms of fiscal year 2025, has a 3% budget increase that is below level service, but will not result in reductions. The district intends to use school choice and unused fiscal 24 circuit breaker funds. South Hadley, 1,644 students. Reductions include four full-time teaching staff and 23 paraprofessional positions. Their recommended budget is 25.5 million. Longmeadow, 2,773 students. Their approved budget features the reduction of multiple positions, including student support teachers, elementary and middle school music, and a special education teacher and supervisor. Amherst Pellin, 1,210 students, approved a 35.75 million budget and said that uh, we must note that within this, that it is an 8.2% increase, and there it saved them from doing 15 positions to reduce to meet this. However, that still has to be approved. Amherst, 1,050 students, recommended a 27.2 million budget. This is an increase of 
1,281,964 above the fiscal year that we are currently in. East Hampton, 1,397 students. The school committee approved a 9.78% increase with no reductions. This has not been approved by the city yet. Regardless of the budget outcome, it is important as a community to remember we must work together collaboratively. After a decision is made by both the school committee and the city for next year's budget, we as a community will have to work together to make these changes viable while still providing a rich educational experience for our children. Part of my comments include words from Lucy Bradis, who is uh, the president of the senior class at NHS, who spoke to me during the student protest yesterday. After she speaks, Bobby Jones, the district's business manager, will take us through the suggested reductions for the various percentages. I first want to thank our superintendent, Dr. Bonner, for giving me the opportunity to speak once more before the budget vote. Um, you have heard a lot of feelings from a lot of people about how these cuts will affect students, families, and our community as a whole. There have been multiple budgets proposed, and I am pretty sure that Dr. Bonner talked about the 8% first look budget and then the 4% mayor's budget and like updated, which has included a lot of extra cuts, and then the level services, which are to my knowledge the three proposed budgets that have been um, floated. Um, I want to touch base on how the cuts will, as a whole, affect NHS and then also the other schools um, as part of my comments. At NHS, to my knowledge, these cuts, well, okay, teachers have to be what's co called, quote, pink slipped, which means alerted that their position may be cut partially or fully by April 15th, which means that they have already been alerted that if these cuts go through, their positions may be cut. So us as students and community members within NHS already know what positions are on the line and what teachers may be cut partially or fully. Those teachers include, as stated, the theater teacher position for the arts department. Um, as of today, I learned two history teacher positions, um, a, ma a math teacher position would be cut fully, not in part, but fully, and then a science teacher would move to teaching part math, part science, which would be a 50% decrease in both departments. Now, I can speak that no teacher can live on a 50% salary, barely on a full-time salary. So to think that a teacher would keep a job that is at a 50% salary is absurd. So by proposing 50% cuts, we are proposing full position cuts because no person is going to take that job, especially not here in Northampton where teachers can barely live on their full-time salaries here in our town. On top of these cuts, to meet the 4% mayor's budget, there have been additional reductions proposed. Those reductions at NHS include a guidance counselor, which was brief briefly spoken on in the um, first portion of the meeting from the other NHS students. This would bring our caseload to 300 students, uh, each guidance counselor's caseload to 300 students. Letters of recommendation would not be able to be filled out, which means when we apply to colleges, they would have to check a box saying, we don't do letters of recommendations here at NHS, which not a good luck on our district. Um, a adjustment counselor would be um, taken away. Now that adjustment counselor is the only adjustment counselor who can see students without a 504 or IEP. That leaves her caseload at about 700 students. Those 700 students would not have an adjustment counselor because the 504 and IEP students need all three other adjustment counselors to meet their caseloads. So that's 700 students without a counselor. Um, other proposed cuts which I have, have here on my phone today a salary freeze for all staff, which means no staff will go up in steps. They will keep exactly what they have this year, which is honestly insulting, um, and against the union contracts. At the elementary schools, it would be a tiered support from Bridge Street, from Jackson Street, and from Leeds. As stated previously, that is a safety concern for our schools. Our students cannot be served and cannot be in a public school that is not safe and these staff members make it safe so to put our students at a safety risk with these budget cuts again insulting um and 
dangerous. Academic support teachers from Jackson Street Leeds and Ryan Road, those students who are already at disadvantages with their learning are gonna be put further at disadvantages and are not gonna catch up. We're in a literacy crisis here in America and I'm sure it's affecting our district here in Northampton and we are making it worse with these cuts. At JFK, all extracurricular stipends would be reduced. So any teacher who does a club gives students that extra you know, um, time they would not get paid for that. Any other stipends outside of just their main salary, they would not get paid for that, which means we're gonna be in a position we were in when I was in seventh grade, where there is no extra time after school. There is no time with our teachers in the middle school, and that was a really hard time. Um, all staff stipends for department chair and team leader will be cut, which means every person who is a department chair at NHS and JFK will not be paid for their extra work that goes into scheduling and planning and serving students, so they won't do it, which means we will not have the vital things that they give to our other teachers and to their departments and to the students. Um, extra per diem at adjustment and guidance counselor days. I had to ask what that was because I didn't know what that was. Apparently, our adjustment guidance counselors get paid per day for extra days to do scheduling, letters of recommendation, other very necessary tasks. That would be cut, which means they wouldn't do it, which means our students would not be scheduled for their classes. And at NHS, our innovations and pathways internship coordinator would be cut. That runs our TA programs, our work study programs, our internships, our IT pathways, our healthcare pathways, our peer tutoring network. I don't know if you can name another job in this district that has that many things under its belt. That is so many students served. That caseload is enormous. <laughs> to cut that position is taking away all opportunities for these, for I, IT aid, I have done internships, it's taking away all those opportunities from students, and that is what makes Northampton special, but not only, that's just what makes Northampton High School like function, to give students these other opportunities. It's not a luxury, it's a necessity. Um, and then again at NHS, the extracurricular stipends, the department head stipends, the extra per diem, counselor days, all cut there too. So our middle and high school students would not have teachers anyone be able to serve them outside of school time, which is an, a necessary function of our schools. Um, and to my knowledge, that the central office, the school committee stipends would be cut, which it's not the top of my concern, but I'm sure it's a concern of yours. You are putting in this work, and I do believe you deserve to be compensated for that, and to not be compensated for that is probably insulting to a lot of people, since our teachers are not being compensated. So. I hope you can understand a little bit of how they feel. Um, our school committee supplies will be cut. And our special education teacher stipends district-wide will be cut. I don't know what that means. But I know it's not good. <laughs> and I should know what it means. The fact is, is that this budget is not accessible and this information is not accessible. And so I have put in a lot of work today to understand it. I have spent a lot of my time out of the day talking to department heads and talking to teachers about what it means. And I actually do know what it means because I did that. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to fight to know what my, what my city and my district, how they're budgeting. I shouldn't have to fight for that, but I did. And so now I am urging you before this vote to vote for our students, our families, our teachers, our city. It is not a luxury to have an education. It is not a luxury to fund our schools. It is a necessity that we have as a city in a service to our, to our community. So with that, I'm gonna end my remarks. And please, please fund for, um, vote for a level services budget. So thank you very much, Lucy. I appreciate that. That was a conversation that took place on yesterday. But there are some things that you spoke of right now that we'll give clarification to. So when you are looking and putting together budgets, there are many things that you must consider, which includes contract languages and what are all these stipend positions coming from and what they mean. And that was something that was bargained by the, the, the actual um, union. And so literally these stipends are 
to support any additional things that we or tasks that the individual may be required to do as a part of their job. So with that, though, however, I do need to correct you. The RIF notices, which is the reduction in force, we have until May 1st, and that is by statute and that's by the law. We have 60 calendar days to provide that notification. So I just want to make sure that, the, that everyone hears that so that there's no misinformation that's out there because that keeps happening. And so I also want to clarify in terms of how budgets are put together. Budgets are not just randomly coming out of the blue. You know, we look at what we currently have and we roll it over. However, uh, the administrators, I'm sorry, I had to pause because I was so quiet while everybody else was talking and I'm hearing, you know, undertone sounds. I'm sorry. I just, it just gives me a pause. So when um, we put this budget together, it was conversations with principals who talked about their needs at their buildings. And you would think that principals, in conversation with their staff, could give a very good, uh, have a very good conversation about their needs. So the next step is then, if we are meeting a target of how can we make those reductions, those suggestions came from our administrators in conversations. And we did it as a, a group, knowing that we wanted to maintain uh, certain areas in terms of the needs of the schools. And so that's how a budget is developed. It's not just coming at a whim. And, it, and uh, then I want to also share that the things that uh, our business manager is about to go through, it's not budget. It's uh, the list of reductions that we're going to take you through to get to the bottom line. That's what's going to be. That's not a budget that you see <laughs> attached to this agenda. Those are the list of reductions. The 4% list actually came from recommendations that I heard from the committee. That was, and they said specifically, stay out of the classroom. So that's where that list came from, with uh, recommendations of where we should look. And then that's how it came to be. That's how it evolved. So it's not just out of whim. And I want to share that with, with the public. So at this point, I'm going to ask if Bobby Jones would uh, take us through. <laughs> She is our business manager. Take us through those two reduction lists. She will start with the 7.97% with the first few, and then she will take us through the 4%. So, and while um, Dr. Bonner is pulling that up, I just want to say that um, we started with the first draft budget. And I say first draft because you have to have a point from where you start. And that came out of conversations with um, our alt team, principals, department heads, et cetera. Um, so we came up with a number of 4280-908. That's the first draft. From there, um, that, well, that number includes um, some positions that were funded by ESSER, it included some requests, but not all, from conversations with um, various people. Uh, and from there, we made the cuts down to the first view budget, which we'll, we'll be going through in a minute. Um, as well, we did have some reductions and corrections that were made from the first draft to the first view, and we'll show that. I'm coming. Yep. <laughs> While you're um, taking us, I want to let you know the way you just protested it was so disrespectful and so rude. She was so respectful. She's so articulate. That is a beautiful voice. And I am so embarrassed that an adult of our community was speaking to a sweet child that way. <laughs> So that shows the limited view because I was really speaking to the public. So if well, you, you took that personally, that. I apologize to you that you took I that personally. No, no. Child that you spoke to in such a disrespectful way. 
kind of mirroring what you're doing right now. So, yes, Lucy, yes, but I'm an adult you're an adult. And she okay, no, no. That's, that's it. Does she go out? She went in. Um, while I'm waiting also for that um, document to be pulled up, I just want to say there was a lot of talk um, from the discussions, level service and level funded budgets. And just so that we're all clear, level services would be um, keeping exactly what you have this year um, to continue into FY25 with the increases. It wouldn't be adding anything. It wouldn't be subtracting anything. Um, that's not exactly what has happened because there were additions, there were subtractions. Level funded, which was also um, put out there a lot, is a budget that would be exactly the same amount as the FY24 budget, which would be a really hard scenario to take. So um, I just want to clear that up a little bit. All right, now you have the document up. So um, our first draft budget was at 42,805,908. That was what we had from conversations with the alt team and everybody that included some additions, um, and some ESSER positions that we knew probably couldn't be sustained. From there, we reduced it to 40,778,585 to our first view budget. That was a decrease of 2,027,323. And what was reduced from there was in the central office or the district, um, total district, we reduced a uh, superintendent school committee clerk from 1.0 to a 0.5. We reduced the registrar from a 0.88 to a 0.7, which was a one day reduction. Um, our transportation contract, we were able to decrease the um, contract service with Durham by increasing our use of transportation revolving. Uh, we reduced the general fund support of the cafeteria with the onset of the free lunch that enabled us to reduce that 23,399, um, which is is good, but we will keep an eye on going into future years because this is new. Uh, special education clerical, there was a reduction, but it wasn't a reduction in the position. It was a reduction in how the funding was. So the funding was all out of the um, local budget, but now it's out of the local budget with a 0.2 out of the um, special education 240 grant. Uh, customer uh, custodian uniform allowance, we were able to reduce just looking on the past use of that. Um, extraordinary maintenance, extraordinary um, maintenance contract, extraordinary maintenance supplies, we reduced those. That was in talks with our um, director, Tony Kuznirs. Um, not easy by any means, but when you're in a pinch, you do that. Uh, professional development stipends and professional development contract services were reduced. Again, not ideal, but that's what we did. Moving on to um, JFK, we reduced um, originally. Now, let me bring you back up to the top. I'm sorry, because that was the left side. Let's go over to the right side because there's changes from the first U budget to, to what we have currently talked about, which results in no change to the bottom line. The bottom line number is no change, but we have transportation drivers that is reduced by 113,409 because that line was actually over budgeted. Um, 
I had a conversation with Tammy. We went through all the hours. We went through all the drivers. We went through everything. And um, I found that I had put in summer and some additional hours that didn't need to be there. So that is what that reduction. There is actually no reduction in any drivers. It's just that I had originally over budgeted. Same with the crossing guards. Um, in looking at the actual hours that they do and notating that there is one um, crossing guard that actually does the tax write-off program, I was able to reduce that line. Um, translation services we could reduce. Um, we had a new program that our EL director, Lauren Berry, found that would work and hopefully save us quite a bit of money, the 40,000. Um, there's a new program, it's like six, a little bit under 6,000. Um, plus our parent square and all these new initiatives that are happening, we should have savings there. Um, I re-looked at the transportation revolving and I added um, 10,000 to offset the costs. And then we had to increase the budget from the column changes that had come in um, by the $12,229. And that we didn't know at the first look at the budget because they have time, they have a deadline that they have to get those in by. Now we'll move down to the JFK. And so JFK originally had a reduction of um, uh, 0.5 PE and foreign language and a 504 coordinator, and then uh, integration tech integration, which was a retirement. So that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a reduction in an employee. That would be a retirement. I'm not sure if that's actual or not. Um, and then. Going over again to the right side, you'll see that we reduced a 1.0 math integrationist that was in conversations with the schools, um, the administration of the schools, and that was so that they could keep the Northampton High School guidance counselor. Moving down to the Bridge Street School. Um, and you'll find this in each of the elementary schools. We reduced a 1.0 paraprofessional, which is the first grade. That was um, has been a cut that has been there for at least two years now that I know of. Um, reduce principal clerical to like 10 hours a week. I did it for 52 weeks because there'll be additional costs. Um, due to contract language that if a um, existing person has to cover the office alone, there's an extra stipend. Um, tier support staff, that was reduced 1.0. Um, there was an interventionist um, that we had added into the 25 budget that was paid formally from ESSER, that was reduced. Title I um, reading, we had increased in the um, first draft budget to 1.0, but going to the first view, we reduced it back to the 0.8, so it's not a reduction. Again, that's just, we didn't do the increase. Um, Jackson Street School, same, we had the, the clerical position. Um, we had had we had added an additional adjustment counselor from the draft to the first view. We didn't put in in the first view, but it was not it's not a person or a position. It was an addition that we didn't do. Um, we did reduce three classroom FTE teachers based on enrollment um, and in conjunction with the um, principal. And then um, the 1.0 paraprofessional, again, the first grade. That has been in question for two or three years. 
down to Leeds School. You'll see the same. Um, you got the, well, not the same, but originally we had two FTE SPED teachers that we were going to reduce. We've changed that to 1.5, and even since that conversation, we've changed that to reducing it to just 1.0. Um, to make up for that difference, we are going to cut a 0.5 math interventionist. Uh, then we have the um, classroom teacher that will be reduced. That's, again, enrollment. Um, principal clerical, the first grade paraprofessional, and um, a library 0.5 paraprofessional. Um, that will be shared with Ryan Road. You'll see that in the same. Ryan Road will have the same. Um, and then there is a retirement of that. Um, one position. So um, that won't actually be a person ultimately. Uh, Ryan Road, we have a paraprofessional, the first grade, um, the library, 0.5, which I just spoke to at Leeds, um, principal clerical, which is across the board. Um, I had an additional building sub that they had originally requested that I'm now removing and um, uh, one SPED teacher from Ryan Road. But again, looking on the right side, there'll be an addition um, based off Josh Dixon's recommendations of a 0.3 VCBA. Down to the high school, um, originally we had um, reduced two FTE teachers. It was going to be one academic and one um, elective. But at the time, we didn't know the enrollments or anything, and that's still information that's coming in now. Um, reduced the one guidance counselor and one adjustment counselor. That was a retirement so that won't be replaced. And then I had an assistive tech, which is the um, teacher of the deaf and the vision. That was listed, I had it in twice. So that was removed. But go again to the right side, I had missed out on one SPED teacher, so I had to add that back in. Um, Due to Director Dixon's information, we had to increase a 0.5 teacher. We increased a 0.5 BCBA, added a dean of students. We kept the guidance counselor, which if you go back to JFK, um, they reduced that math interventionist to keep the guidance counselor at Northampton High School. Um, a paraprofessional is not a reduction, but that's a change in the funding. So I was able to change that para from the general fund to a SPED tuition revolving account that we have. It doesn't have much. It just has enough of a balance where we could do that um, without having future repercussions. Um, then we are going to reduce the... Bobby, could you just pause for just a moment? Yeah. Because I, mm -hmm. I do want to say, Lucy, I am so sorry. It was not my intent to respond. Please know, it was not my intent to respond that way. I just needed to make sure that people, I did not intend to do that. And, and it was just said that I crushed this child and I did not, I don't do that. So I just want to apologize to her and I want to apologize to this group because that was not my intent. It was really not my intent. All right, Bobby, I'm sorry. I just needed to say that and I wanted to openly Apologize to her. All right, we're good. 
I don't know. We're okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I don't think I heard some of that information and I wasn't sure what you were responding to. So, oh. um, then we're reducing the 504 coordinator at the high school to a 0.5. Um, some of the other additions that we had to the first few budget was the Title IX coordinator which we had um, reduced from the director of health services position. I didn't have in the draft, I had to add that in. Um, the ESP stipends that were um, part of the um, negotiated contract, I didn't have budgeted um, in 24. I had to add the 35,000 for that. Um, that includes their stipend plus they get additional hours for working. And then um, we have a data coordinator that took on extra work between the transition of um, our digital literacy coordinator and our IT department having lost the IT director. So that is the changes that we had from the original draft to the first view budget that was presented in December. The other sheet that you'll see when it's pulled up is the what we would need to do to meet the 4% that is in the um, fiscal stability plan of the city. And it's suggestions, it's suggestions that we received from various people, um, various school committee members, um, and their suggestions. They're not actual cuts, they're just suggestions at this point. But if you look at that document and you look particularly at the top, um, to meet the 4%, and I'm going to go to the right side without the 1.2 million, which was the one time funds, we would have to reduce our first view budget by 2,750,000. If we included the 1.2, which we shouldn't because that was one time funding, um, we would reduce by 1.5. So the total on this sheet comes down to the bottom line on, on line 36 of 3,083,113, which is more than we would need to reduce. But they include um, on line nine, a salary freeze, which means no steps, no COLA, um, know anything, and that would be from everybody, from the superintendent all the way. That includes absolutely everybody. And we would save $1,899,369. Um, There's other options we could do. We could do, you know, no steps. We could do no COLA, but yet steps. I mean, there's other things you can do. Um, then as uh, Dr. Bonner had mentioned previously, we went towards looking at things that didn't affect directly the student classrooms. So it's the tiered support and the academic supports um, in the elementary schools. JFK, um, the extracurricular stipends, staff stipends, extra per diem, um, days for adjustments, uh, counselors and guidance counselors. Again, this is all contractual language that would need to um, be negotiated. But those are things that we could look towards reducing. Um, NHS, we would take back that counselor that we added in with the reduction of the math interventionist at JFK. Um, we'd look towards the innovations pathways and internship coordinator. Again, the extracurricular stipends, which as I think one student had said so well, if you take that away, that won't happen. So that is 
student facing, but again, um, that was based on suggestions. Um, staff stipends for department heads and extra per diem days. So yeah, guidance counselors get extra per diem days to work in the summer um, to do all the scheduling and all that good stuff. So that would take that away. And then um, central office would be, again, this was offered up, not by all, but by some, the school committee stipends, um, school, school committee supplies, and then um, we also have special ed teacher stipends. They get roughly about $1,000 on top of their um, annual salary if they are a special education teacher. Again, a contractual um, item that would need to be discussed and reviewed. But those are some suggestions to get down to that 4% if that's what we needed to do. Um, just so you know, if we were to take, you know, every 1% to reduce from the first view budget would be about a $400,000 reduction. Um, to get a 7.97% without the 1.2 million one-time funding, we would have to further reduce the first view budget by a million four forty three. Bobby, can you say that first thing again? The so from the first view budget, everyone if we were to reduce from that point to go towards the um oh I four percent. Yeah. Each one percent is four hundred thousand. And that's what I have. Thanks, Bobby. Member Stein. Uh, thank you. I have um, some brief remarks prepared. Um, but before I give them, I just want to make some comments about sort of what I see in the room tonight. Um, and there's really, I think there's there's two things I'm feeling. I'm feeling um, really inspired and really proud of all the students and staff um, and community who really value our educators and are really proud of the work they do every day. And we're seeing with our children who are here speaking so eloquently and advocating for their schools. And I'm really encouraged by it and really heartened by it. Um, and I'm also really disappointed in this dynamic where it feels like um, people calling for a level service budget are not really being heard. They must be misled by misinformation, or if we only understood the cuts we're talking about and the, buddy, and the budgets, uh, the strategic, you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> the um, fiscal stability plan, then they would gladly accept the cuts. When I think in reality is there's a clash of values and a clash of interpretation of a long history. And I want to acknowledge that. <laughs> the other thing I want to say is that the process of getting here is not great, and I'd like to improve it. And part of the problem is we have a charter with a strong mayor, and we're often treated like any other department, and we're not. We also have a rule in the school committee that no member of the school committee directs the work of the district or anyone in the district without the approval of the body. And at no point did we vote to say, we want a 4% budget, make it happen. Yet that was the instructions given, because, like any other department. So we need to rethink this process, because if I'm reading the room tonight right, I don't think we're going to go for either of these and we terrorized a lot of people and stressed a lot of people out, perhaps unnecessarily. So I, we really need to talk about the process. Um, the other thing I want to say is it really upsets me that 
were told that administrators or educators, these were the cuts they chose. I had to put in a freedom of information request uh, in order to get the actual requests from the principals in the budgeting process. And I can tell you from finally getting them that none of them requested these cuts. And these administrators are non-unit employees who ha are in an insane position to not be able to say anything about this, and I, I feel for them. So I, I just want to acknowledge that. And I also want to acknowledge that people that make mistakes in what they understand about a very complicated budget, especially children, are asking for engagement. They're not asking to be corrected. And the community does not appreciate <laughs> Um, I'll try to get myself together for my remarks. Um, I promise this is brief. The austerity driving the two budget proposals in front of us this evening has had a demoralizing effect on our community. Rather than dwell on the real and disastrous consequences either of those budgets would produce, I want to take a moment to focus on the incredible energy in this room and in our community. We've heard loud and clear from our community that they value education and that they want our city's budget to reflect that fact. What they are asking for is not radical. It's not controversial. It's to hold on to what they currently have, to be given the opportunity to keep you know, swimming in place. Okay? As a school committee, we're responsible for advocating for the needs of our students. And tonight, we need to send a strong message that Northampton Public Schools needs to be one of the top priorities of our district's budget and our city's budget, and its funding needs to reflect that. A level service budget will send that signal. I am happy to participate, along with my colleagues from the Budget and Property Subcommittee, in joint conversations with the City Council Committee on Finance to identify appropriate areas for cuts in other areas of the city budget and the possibility of using reserve funds in creative ways. This work will help us both identify and demonstrate what our values are and produce a budget that reflects them. I keep asking what expenditures in the city budget are more important than kids learning to read or students with disabilities accessing education or students packed into overcrowded classrooms. So far, I have heard no argument, only that we have a fiscal stability plan that we need to follow and it stipulates a framework for how we allocate resources. The limits on how much revenue we can generate are real, and prudent fiscal planning is wise. However, following a budget framework on autopilot that ignores changes to our needs and is inflexible is not a recipe for success. We need to re-envision our plan, articulate our values, and appropriately fund our many needs in the most responsible way. Our problem isn't only or even mostly a revenue problem. Our problem is a political problem and the political choice to underinvest in MPS over many years. We can make a different political choice tonight, and we have a real opportunity to do so. Our community's strong, our residents as talented as any community anywhere, and we deeply value education. I'm inspired and believe we can become an exceptional district. We just have to have the will to do so. I make a motion that we pass a level service Budget of forty-two million eight hundred five thousand and nine hundred and eight dollars. I would second that motion. Excuse me, who was the second? Member <laughs> Were you trying to second? Is that what you were saying? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. You couldn't hear. Okay. <laughs> Can I make a, res a respectful request? Yeah. I am hard of hearing. 
every time it erupts in in um, applause, I can't hear what the member is saying. So can I ask you to do things like this to show your approval? Because I can't hear when you do that. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Member Sherpy Cox, did you want to say anything? I would love to, yeah. Um, I was not much inspired by my middle school or my high school. They were fine, I guess. I had a science teacher that was pretty fun. Um, my understanding is that after he retired, the middle school went downhill. Um, in my high school, I only remember a couple of teachers, the women's studies, uh, sorry, women's history teacher, um, the, the first lesbian I ever had, out lesbian, that I ever had as a teacher, um, is one of the only ones I remember. Um, and my school was fairly well funded. So none of, almost none of what the students and staff members talked about tonight existed in my high school. Um, and so that tells me that the situation we have in Northampton is really um, remarkable because Madison, Wisconsin is not a place that is known for cutting its schools. That's where I went to school. Um, and I never heard, you know, as a kid about budget cuts and that sort of thing. I certainly wasn't involved in it this way. So as I'm reflecting about, um, about our decision tonight, at the very least, I think we owe it to our community who has overwhelmingly reached out to us asking for, for services to continue um, and telling us that we are at the bare bones. Member Agna, you said it yourself in the last meeting. We are down to the bone. So that's why I seconded this motion, because I think that we deserve to give it a vote for our community. Um, I have many things to say about kind of uh, the budget and process and so forth um, before I pass it to you know, other members, because I want to kind of um, let other members speak and especially uh, you know, speak to the motion. Um, but I want to give a special shout out to Winston Campbell, the fourth grader uh, at Bridge Street, who um, walks with me to uh, his school every Monday morning on the walking school bus at Bridge Street School and um, is um, has decided that he is going to enter into um, budget and finance when he grows up. <laughs> um, kid after my own heart. So um, I, uh, I was crying earlier. I'm going to stop before I start crying again. Thank you. Uh, Member Davis. Um, I'm going to, I'll raise my hand up. Okay. Member Agna? I'm just going to ask my colleague, Member Gacy, to go before me. Could you do it? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, we've heard loud and clear from the community about the need for level funding. Um, and I think that it is incumbent upon us to present this issue to the city council so that it can be heard and discussed by the entire community. I would ask that everybody viewing this meeting and everybody participating go home and in the next little time, talk to all the people that you know, your neighbors and acquaintances, who do not have children in the schools and make sure that they understand 
why we are doing this, why we are doing it, because there will be pushback. Um, basically, we're going to, if this goes through, it's going to be cutting of lots of other departments citywide unless we can throw a Hail Mary and uh, get Smith to participate in some kind of um, pilot program where they pay in lieu of property taxes on a regular basis. They have like $500,000 in uh, property that is, they're nonprofit, so they're not taxed, but they also have $2 billion in, um, in endowments. Uh, I know that they, I have heard that they have like a 4% budget gap this year, uh, but that's because they just want to live on their interest. Um, I also think that it is incumbent upon us when we make these, uh, when I make this recommendation, if we were to make this recommendation, that we as a committee need to immediately <coughs> start working proactively on um, figuring out ways to reconfigure and consolidate our <coughs> schools to more efficiently use our resources, <coughs> our teachers. And that may be closing one or two elementary schools so that you don't have six classes at Jackson Street at 50% of their students at 27 or 28 before you even get move-ins. Um, I think that uh, we need to immediately apply to the MSRB, I think I've got that right, mm -hmm. of the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, who is the board <coughs> that uh, proves and funds <coughs> school building like what Amherst is getting. <coughs> what East Hampton got. It's a long process, but I think we should get our name in there immediately because for me, I envision something like having two K-8 to campuses that are new and energy efficient and, you know, that we can more easily balance classrooms. Um, I think we should have an override. Uh, I do think that if it comes down to class size versus the arts, that we should keep the arts. Um, because they provide such, a, um, such an enriching part to so many students, as we have seen here tonight by the very enthusiastic uh, theater groups. Um, I just can't see cutting ESPs. I can't, that I've read some compelling letters about uh, BCBA, <coughs> who are the people who help intervene in um, uh, when kids just behaviorally can't, you know, are so stressed out that they're losing it. Um, I also think that our student intervention staff, these are some of the ones that were listed uh, in the additional cuts we'd have to go from the 8% to the 4% budget. And those, that short-term focus, you know, they take students for six weeks that are sort of not getting it and are really failing in the classroom. They give them six weeks of intensive work and often they can return them to the classes without those students have it, with those students having caught up and not having to fall further and further behind until we're facing a special education referral to get support for that student. Um, I also love restorative practices. So those are the things that I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> not ready to go back? No? Yes? Um, 
I've given a couple of speeches already in the last couple of meetings that I, uh, I appreciated that Dr. Bonner included it, one of them, in um, her, her newsletter. So I don't think I need to repeat the kinds of things that I said. Um, I just have a few comments tonight. I wanted to first really appreciate the students in Northampton schools. And I have a special feeling about them because some of them I was their principal, but so many of them I weren't, wasn't the, the principal. And I really have had such great conversations over the last few um, weeks at different opportunities for different opportunities to do that. And um, I've really appreciated your willingness to talk and to engage and to try to understand different perspectives. Um, I think that that is a real mark of a good education. And I do think it's something that we should be proud of in Northampton, that we've had students who have developed this kind of critical thinking and perspective taking, and that you're very, very kind as well. So thank you very much. I've also appreciated some of the letters that we've received in email. Um, I, I know the pain. I know the feelings that families have. As our former superintendent said one time at a convocation, he said, these are your babies, and these are the people who you have to advocate for, and these are the children. And um, that's so important to me to keep in mind. I understand the reality of the city finances. Um, I happen to see how Director Nardi has laid it out, and I think I understand it and accept it that we are in a situation that's very difficult. I don't see how we can continue to do business as usual in our schools. Um, this isn't new to us. This has um, happened before, and it's going to continue to happen if we don't do something differently. Um, and I think that if we are to ask the city council to join us in understanding how we're going to make our schools the schools we want to be, we have to pledge to the city that we're going to look at our, our schools a little differently and our ways of giving education. Um, I think we need to engage in the strategic plan and have a vision and mission for our children that I think will include further lobbying for the more funding from the state, reimagining schools to encourage more students and families to come and enroll. We need to support the initiatives for more affordable housing. It's a huge problem for Northampton, and I think that that's keeping many of our families away or has, has driven many of our families away. And I do agree that we do need to look at whether we should consolidate schools. And I don't know if that, what that means at this point. I don't have a complete vision for that. But I would like to speak to others who are more uh, experts in the field. We have somebody who I know in our community who's looked at school designs and is working in East Long Meadow right now. So I think we have a lot of resources in our community for how to, to reimagine schools or consolidate them, and including our city buildings, too, because we have a climate mandate. And in order to meet that mandate, we're going to have to do something differently. I swore to, on, on a, a, it wasn't a Bible, I think, but I swore um, to support the students of the children of Northampton. It's part of our code of ethics in school, school committees that um, I realized that my primary responsibility is to the children. Um, and I, I value that. I valued it as an educator, and I value it now. And I think we are going to have to ask the city council to help us with this. Member Miller? Um, I First of all, could echo a lot of what Member uh, Agna and Member Gazi have said, but um, I am fully aware of the financial constraints that the city is dealing with, and I 
want to say that I really appreciate all the work that the superintendent and our business manager have put into working on these budgets. However, I have to say that I joined the school committee because I have a deep historic value for public education and I really need our community to fund uh, public education for our students. I so appreciate every single comment made by students and staff. I have read every single letter that's been sent to us, every email. I've been up at night. <laughs> this has been torture. So, but I have to say that the reason I, because of how um, I, the reasons I joined the school committee is to protect the schools. And now, as member therapy Cox talked about her history, theater and music saved me in high school. They were my safe space. I can't even imagine cutting that. And Despite my concerns about our financial constraints, I really, I'm very committed to, we do need to really look in the strategic planning at how we can re-envision some of the things in the schools so that we can reduce the costs, including possibly closing elementary schools and consolidating. But at this juncture, I cannot, I cannot vote for this budget, and um, I need to turn to the city council to help us resolve this issue. Um, and that's where I am. Um, Member Davis. Um, thank you very much. Um, again. Several things that have been said. I have a word for word <laughs> written down myself. Um, so I'll just go through them. And one of them is um, um, thank you very, very much for your comments tonight, um, for your emails for weeks. Exactly as <laughs> Member Miller said, I have read every one repeatedly. I've highlighted, I've circled, I wrote notes to myself. This is the same as that one. These are common themes, all of that. Um, I would venture to say we all have done that, but I don't want to put words in our mouth, but I bet I'm right. Um, the first bullet I have on here for my focus is focus on the students. We are advocates for the students, but something that has been on my mind is we are also part of a larger community. Uh, we have our role, very important, but we are part of a whole city, which is very complex. In my time on the school committee, I've increasingly understood more and more how complex it is. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. I'm not sure where it gets me, but it's, I really get the, it's not as tidy. Not very tidy at all. Um, very important to me, um, I have no control over this, I think, but I don't want to pit the schools against other departments. Um, firefighters are important. I think that's important. I think the taking care of, of houseless people is important. I, I think that there's a lot that's important. Um, but my job here that I said I wanted to do was on the school committee, so I get that, that that has to be my particular focus. Um, that in mind, 
I also don't want to pit arts against reading. I don't want to pit arts against math or science. Um, again, easier said than done, but um, all my best friends were the thespians in <laughs> school. But I also, you know, I was a great reader and I loved my first grade, re like all of that is super important. Um, I'm very concerned about any special education funding uh, cuts. Like, very important, and that's also a legal thing. So, um, uh, so the last thing I want to say, and I'm not going to, uh, oh no, second to last thing. The must doing must do things differently. Whether it's closing the schools, the multi-age classrooms, the thinking outside the box, <coughs> um, seems like um, imperative. Have to have to do that. Um, so this is the last thing. Um, Member Stein, I only see dedicated dedicated people on this school committee who love children and are working very hard. There is no clash of values here at all. You are heard. You have been heard, period. It's very important to me that you understand that. Nobody is ignoring your thoughts, your concerns. Please know that. I'm not only speaking for myself, I am positive, positive that Member Stein is not the only one who loves you. Thank you. Member Hennessy. I always follow at something. I, I do want to say a few things, and I love, um, I love the comments, and we've been, everyone's been reading. A lot. Um, I support sending this back to the um, city council, and I know that that's really hard for people. Um, but I do think this is a community discussion around what trade-offs we have to make. I'm, I'm going to try not to repeat, but I know I will a little bit. And I'm actually, while I loved all the students, I really do. And what you said, I, I, I was actually listening to the students who weren't here, because as Ezekiel Baskin, one of our speakers, said, um, his theater teacher, I think that's what he said, saved his life. And mm -hmm. I think. I can name teachers um, and counselors at our schools who've saved some kids' lives that I know. Um, so like Jess Roll, Miss Jenny Jen, um, Ed Stone, um, you know, these are people who had such a, have and continue to have such an impact on our students' lives. And those kids aren't as unbelievable as the student council in terms of confidence and agency. And the theater group, my gosh, like you're so wonderful. Um, so I kept thinking about those kids who aren't here and how I worry about this budget. I really value tiered support specialists. They are, I'm a special ed teacher and an economics teacher, so it's kind of weird, right? Um, but I, they're, like, crucial. Um, I, I'm here for the students. Um, with that said, um, we can't, we, the, the contract is an agreement we've made with our educators, and we have to really honor that. So that's something that I just want to put out there. Um, long run, short run. Again, I said I teach economics. Um, I think we could <laughs> fix some things in the short run in our, in our community after we have a hard discussion, like a bond rating. Maybe not really short run, but to me it's easier to fix that than some of the devastating effects of these cuts on our elementary, middle, and high school students. I know a lot of people in the community, and I've gotten a lot of letters, don't support an override. That's scary to me, because I think we're going to need it. Mm -hmm. um, and as, um, I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Jersky said, we need, and as many people here said, we need to participate in actively as a community. And that, when I mean people who live here, people who teach here, people who work here, in a long-term um, strategy session. Because we have unbelievable human capital. The, our paraeducators, our teachers, our counselors, are amazing, and we could. I think we have the potential to have unbelievable school, more unbelievable schools, um, if we think out of the box. 
This is a place to do it. Obviously, we are in a systems failure. There are 212 communities in the Commonwealth who are in similar situations. You know, we've got to, we could be a leader, and I think we, we could be, we should be, and I think we have it. Um, so I support <coughs> this going back to the city council at a level funded um, level. So that's it. Member Labounty. First, I wanted to say thank you for all the comments. I really, really appreciated them. And, and I saw the students with their hands shaking and their voices shaking. And I wanted to say, though your voice be shaking, you spoke your truth. And so I really appreciate that, because that's not easy to do. So I just wanted to say, I see you. Um, and I wanted to thank, for, I want to thank Member Stein for just making the motion so that we didn't do this. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I also want to say I really appreciate it. Um, I think it's Ms. Hidalgo. I think you pronounced that right. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of ideas about possibilities of things we might have to consider, things we need to think about, from regionalizing to things in the classroom. Like, really had some good ideas. And I, I want to have that conversation. I want us to think about. Um, what do we need to do differently to make this work? Because I think we can. Um, we need to do something in the short term, um, and that's, that's not easy. And I totally I appreciate the work that the superintendent and Bobby have done, because I've done what we've asked them to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, I appreciate that. Um, but I also feel it's a bigger conversation. And so I, too, support it going back to the, the city council, and I just I wanted to say thank you to my peers for talking this over with us. Um, <coughs> so, and it, it actually isn't a difficult decision for me because I feel like it's due process. It's what we're supposed to do as a school committee is advocate for the best budget we can. We may not get it, but that's our job. So thank you. Member Foster, can I? Okay, thank you to my colleagues. Um, and to all of you are, who are here tonight. Um, and Member Davis, you said uh, sort of what I was thinking. Um, so many of you know I, I was on city council for four years before coming over to school committee. And one of the most painful experiences um, I always have found is this process where people think they're not being heard when they are. And that's really hard. We hear you. I hear, I've read all the emails, I've heard all of your public comment. We are listening. Sometimes that translates and, um, you know, it, it, it can translate to decisions being made that people didn't advocate for, but of course there's so many voices that we're listening to. Um, so the first thing I do want to say is that this process, and I don't mean here in Northampton with this body, I mean this process, the way the schools are funded, the way we go through this every year, it stinks. Okay, we know this, we've all been here. I remember as a student, um, you know, advocating to keep music in the elementary schools, keep the buses, you know, within two miles, um, all of those things, um, and that was the 80s um, that that started. And the other thing I wanna say is as we, you know, I think one of the, the things that's difficult about this is the transition, right? Like, tonight was basically a love letter to the Northampton schools. <laughs> that, was a, that was a beautiful thing. Um, I think that speaks a lot to our students, our ESPs, our teachers, our administrators, um, and the city that's supporting our schools. That's pretty incredible. And then it's like, the, you know, um, it's, it's a very difficult mental switch to go from that to the numbers in front of us. And I just want to acknowledge that that's, that's really tough. Um, and, and here we are in this position. Um, and that's a really, really hard switch. Um, the other thing I want to say about this is um, the human impact on all of this is not lost on me. Um, so I actually used to teach. Um, I was a, a high school teacher in like 2001. Um, and as we were talking about the notification of um, you know, teachers learning that their job may not be funded. That's actually why I don't teach anymore. Um, so I, I got that notice, 
and that was um, really unsettling. And I was very young. I didn't. And I remember some of the grizzled teachers were like, "Oh yeah, that happens every year. <laughs> the, the, the city will like they'll you know it was, it was not Northampton. It was a different city. Oh, that happens every year. It's okay. They'll they'll pass the budget and you'll get rehired. And that's true. I I was rehired for the next year. Um, but that that's really unsettling. And so this human impact as we're looking down a spreadsheet, and we've talked about that, but. It's the students, it's the teachers, it's, it's everybody in the building. Um, and, I, and I really hear that and, and um, just want to acknowledge um, just how difficult these conversations are. Um, OK. Um, the other thing that I did want to say is I understand charge of the school committee. Here we are looking at students first, schools first. Um, and that, that is a guiding principle for all of us. I also, I think because I'm bringing the perspective of having served on city council, the understanding of the child first, which is ever so slightly different than the student first. So I have had the experience of, um, you know, talking with people who don't feel safe in their neighborhoods because there aren't crosswalks. There are speeding cars. Um, you know, there's, there's a child that I'm particularly thinking of who is unable, um, due to a disability, to leave his house and cross the street where he lives. And that's infrastructure money. And that's what's so painful about these conversations is this is all coming from the same wallet, right? Like, so we're thinking about the student first, the child first, and the city first, and all of these things, the arts department um, that matters. If your crosswalk is painted and as a middle schooler, you can walk into Florence Center on sidewalks that are in good condition and hang out with your friends after school. All of these things are part of the life experience of children in our community. And I think these things all really matter. Um, the other perspective I bring is having served on city council for four years, I did not see mismanaged fluff. And I'm not saying that anybody here is saying that there is. But what I saw was department heads who were continually as creative as they could, reducing expenses and trying to meet the needs of our city. And it's everywhere. And as we've mentioned, it is structural. Proposition two and a half, it's BS, right? It's not fair. It holds cities and towns to prolonging infrastructure improvements. It holds us to underfunding our schools. It holds us back from raising the revenue we need to fund our city services. It's unfair, it's not right, it's immoral. It's also immoral that we are funding our schools on local property taxes. That's not right, okay? All of these things. And I tell you, if we wanna get on a bus and go to the State House, I am there for that, okay? I will be there, actually, in a couple of weeks. I know we've done it, we need to keep doing it, and I am there to do whatever I can to support our schools. Um, and that is to say, I understand the energy and the desire to bring this conversation back to city council. Um, I would not support that. The, I just want to explain I won't support that with the higher budget that is a motion right now. I would support it um, with a different budget that is above the <coughs> percent increase. So I just want to explain my vote. And in no way does that mean nobody's being heard or that I don't value the kids or that I don't value education. I'm looking at the childhood experience of Northampton in a little bit bigger lens. That's all. I'll just speak since I'm the last one who hasn't. Um, first, I want to thank the students that came to City Hall yesterday. A bunch of you are still here. Um, I was glad that I got to see you in the morning. Um, and I'm also just so grateful to all the, the students that came back after two um, for a discussion. And I thank, um, I thank you all for being part of that discussion and um, part of this discussion, and I'm just very inspired by how much you care, and uh, I especially appreciated hearing the ideas that you shared with me, and also appreciated how open you were to listening as well as sharing. Um, and I greatly respect and appreciate everyone who's contacted us and shared their thoughts and their concerns and spoken up here, and I appreciate that you all are doing your job. Um, you know, I'm just gonna repeat what I said one day shy of exactly two years ago um, at this budget meeting because this situation we're in is exactly what I feared would happen when we created deficits we could not fill with recurring funds. So I said, 
I can't in good conscience support, conscience support something that I don't know is sustainable. It would be irresponsible, and I have a responsibility to the students and the district and the city of Northampton. And I cannot support something that I know will create a situation that undoes years of work to stabilize the school budget and to create security for the people who work for the schools and city and the needed services for the people and the students of Northampton. Member Stein. I was going to make an amendment to my motion, but I'm not going to screw anything up. So I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to tell you what my amendment would be. And this is inspired by all of my colleagues' remarks and their, their willingness to really think deeply and engage deeply with the strategic planning process uh, in collaboration with the city, which I think is, is great. If, if anything, if this jolts us to do that, I think that's good. Um, what I would want to add, but I'm not going to, is that the current strategic planning process we have is inadequate to do the work we just talked about. And that's the opportunity and the venue that we have in front of us. So I think we need to make some amendments to that process. Currently, there's very few people on it. The school committee is really not involved. Uh, large segments of the community are not involved. Large segments of the staff. All of the things that everyone is saying about engaging with these ideas, I want to do. So let's re-envision how we're doing the strategic planning process and do the work that we all said we want to do. I'm not going to add it to the motion. Um, someone else wants to, that's fine, but we, we got to do that. Um, I want to do the work. If we're going to talk about, there's a lot of possibilities. If we were to consolidate a school or investigate it, that would take off millions of dollars in capital improvements that were just you know, up for debate in city council the other day. We're investing millions of dollars in many schools with no plan. And we can make different choices. And we should have a holistic conversation about that. But that's not what's happening with the, the current process because none of us are involved and none of these folks are involved. The only involvement we have had is a very poorly responded to survey. I think it was 146 caregivers responded. Um, and the prompts were, you know, sort of speculative paragraph fiction about what we envisioned, which is a great exercise and one that we all did together in the fall, members that were here. But it's not a great survey, and I don't know what we do with that data. We need to get more serious about this, and I hope we can. Thank you. Member Serafi Koch. Uh, so the, I really appreciate that many of the things that were on my list to say have already been said, so I've crossed this off. Um, I um, will bring up again um, my request for expanding multi-year budget planning. Um, and by expanding, I mean, when we, when we, when we vote on a budget, um, we can only vote on that one year's budget. That's the vote that we make. But to have, um, to have the multi-year projections along with that, um, I assume that, that you know, our administrators are, are doing that. I know I do that for my own nonprofit that has a budget, tiny fraction of this amount. So I imagine that our administrators are doing that. And then so to integrate it into our, plannings, our planning. Um, I've talked about investments in communications, the kind of recruitment idea. Um, I felt so much energy from especially um, caregivers this evening around wanting, around wanting uh, to make sure that our, that our um, schools have, have uh, that, that other people know about our schools. And if we are going to be continuing the kind of, what did I call it, uh, special situation, that the, 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 the situation, this, that this education system that we've created is special, if we're going to be able to continue that, having students in it uh, is going to be critical for that. So um, I would uh, see this as a call to action for our entire community around recruitment. We've been creating these amazing, basically, recruitment videos. 
Um, I mean, you saw one tonight from Ryan Road um, that make me want to go to that school. Like, I want to have Forest Fridays. <laughs> I should just go out in the forest on Fridays. Um, yeah. Um, so to, to not just think of this as, like, something that um, – an, ad an administrator has to spend more of their time doing, but you know, parent volunteer committees can do this sort of thing. Um, I actually organized one such committee as this when I was a parent at um, my daughter's um, kindergarten when we lived in San Diego, California. And let me tell you, Prop 13 is even worse than Prop two and a half. So <laughs> there's a reason why I don't live in California anymore. Um, <laughs> um, I also, uh, it, it, along the lines of, of bringing more resources into the district, um, I remember several years ago, um, Superintendent Provost talking about uh, a grant writing position, and it was actually added to the budget, and I don't know entirely what, I don't remember what happened, off the top of my head, I don't remember what happened to that. I, just thought of it tonight, but that's um, one thing that I wanted to uh, to mention. Um, and then, you know, we've been talking so much about about how this is a systemic issue. Obviously, this is not just um, you know an issue that the city of Northampton can solve on its own. Um, this is a state and federal issue. And if, if we as a school committee and as a school community are gonna be a part of that solution, um, our school committee meetings can be opportunities for us to organize ourselves and to organize our community to build the power that is needed to really shift that um, both for the state and you know, potentially federal. Like we, ha we, we have a liaison uh, um, you know, for uh, for legislative work, and um, and I, I I think it shouldn't just be incumbent upon one member to do that, right? It's it's all of our work together. But the key word there is together. We can't do it just. Oh, I called up Joe Comerford and say, hey, you know, we need more funding. Like it's got to be organized we we need um we need messaging we need uh, to to work together on what it is that we're asking for you know um and and remind people continually remind people to do it can you tell that i'm a community organizer in my professional life um and the and the federal issue um can't be understated here not because the feds are going to magically somehow fund education because they're probably not. Um, but our state is facing some major uh, financial headwinds as well. Um, some people call it the migrant crisis. I think that's a ridiculous term that people are not a crisis. This is a work visa crisis. People need work visas, and it has cost our state a billion dollars in this uh, fiscal year so far in supporting people who don't yet have work visas. So the idea that, uh, that in order to support public education, we need to uh, pressure our federal government to get its act together on processing people for work visas, I recognize sounds a little far-fetched, but there is a direct line. Because that $1 billion this fiscal year that our state has spent on people who are not allowed to work because we won't, as a government, process them quickly enough, um, that is, is equal to the entire seven-year implementation of the Student Opportunity Act. So, so we're talking about an, an amazing amount of money. Um, yeah, that, that, those are all of the things I had to say. I really appreciate all of 
all of you up here, and I mean, duh, all of you. <laughs> Clearly, it's getting late at night. I'm not getting any more eloquent. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Are there any further comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, if you're ready. Yes. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> Member Foster Cannon. No. Member Serafi Cox. Yes. Member Stein. Yes. Member Hennessy. Yes. Member Miller. Member Miller. Uh, say yes. She said she didn't hear you. She didn't hear you. Yes. Did not say that. Member Labounty. Yes. <clears throat> Pardon me. Member Agna? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Shara? Abstain. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the ayes have it. Oh, you forgot you me. Forgot Member Casey? Member I vote Gazy. yes. Oh, I forgot to go back up. Sorry, this is a new system for me here. Yeah, Member Gazy? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. Okay. Bobby, um, we're going to move back up to uh, your report. Agenda, monthly pull up the report. monthly expenditure report. Expenditure? Expenditure? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to be really kind of quick here. Good. That's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> um, so gonna I'm just going to point out some of the areas. Um, but if you look at the left-hand side, you'll see the blue bars. Those are the different departments or sections that we report at our end of year report. Um, so those are just the way we do our end of year report and that's how we section it out. But let's move right on to page two. And one of the first things you'll see is the legal services looks like it's overspent by $70,200. Um, that is because if you notice to the left of that um, negative amount is an encumbrance of 69,000. I anticipate that will be about 11,000, which will put us over um, in that line by about 12,000, which um, we're right on track for that budgeted amount because that was for a settlement um, of 12,5. So, um, we're pretty good there. It looks worse than it is. Uh, if you continue on to page, we can move right along to page six. Uh, one of the, the, the very bottom line of the first section, which is the um, SPED additional instruction, that was um, evaluations that are on the payroll. So it's people we pay, um, either retired people that were previously on the payroll, um, but they do evaluations for us. So that is overspent. It was just a year. We have a lot of evaluations that had come up um, for SPED. And then same thing down, if you look at um 96 go down to the bottom part of that page maybe the fourth line up from the bottom it says um 96 772 um you look to the left we still have encumbered 59 735 um so that may not all be realized but again it's just that we've had a lot of um evals that came up that we have to do. So that's why that's overspent. Uh, move along to page seven. Um, 
the second and third section, the substitutes. Um, you'll see a lot of overexpended there. Um, that is because we do have to hire a lot of um, substitutes. Mm. So just for a point of reference, we have um, the pay period that ended in April, April 6th. We had 892 absences. Mm. Um, we had 36 people that were in no pay status. Um, over to March, we had another 820 absences in a two week period, um, 25 people in no pay status. And then in February, um, pay period ended um, February 10th, we had 810 <laughs> absences um, with 19 in no pay. So just to give you kind of an example of why we're spending that much on the substitute section. Uh, now we can go to page eight. Um, you'll look at in the first section, but down maybe three lines up, four lines up, you'll see the um, summer ESP pay is overspent by 26000 And um, that's something we're looking at currently as to how to run that program more efficiently. Um, but that is something that, you know, we, we don't know until the end when we have to um, identify who's going to be in the program. Uh, on page nine, uh, we look at, uh, there's a tuition reimbursement line that looks like it's in the hole by the 24000 it's maybe the sixth line up from the bottom of the middle section there. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really, if you go up one more line, that should be in that line. So we'll have to correct where that got charged to. Um, so that's only in a deficit of about 12,000. Um, and that's because we did have an MOA for um, a couple of people to um, get some reimbursements. Uh, there is the PD contract services, which is that single line. I have to look into that. Um, that might need some moves, maybe move back into a grant or um, move out of that line. But right now it's in the hole by 4,000. Moving on to page, let's see if I have 10. Ten, um, our general supply line, which is the third section down, um, looks like it's in the hole by three thousand and some change. That um, general supply line is we actually pay for some of the city in order to in order to get a bulk buying. Let's say we pay for some of the city um, expenses, but they reimburse us and we do that on a quarterly basis. So that line probably will not have that deficit in it at the end of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then we'll go to page 11. <clears throat> third line up, first section, third line up, there's translator. Um, contract again, you'll see there's an encumbrance of 20,000. That probably will likely be reduced, so we won't have that deficit there. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, page 12. Um, you'll see in the second section, top line, the 504 coordinator, uh, negative 24. That was actually a position that was added back in after the approved budget um, of FY24. And um, that will remain negative and stay there. But it was because of the, the, 
the way they changed it out and it was approved by school committee. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Bobby, can you hold on one sec? That's okay. Um, page 13, very first line, you'll see a deficit of 44,000. Um, that just has to go up one line. If you look back on page 12, um, that was just charged to the wrong line. So we got to correct that charge. So that's not a deficit. Um, then in the same section on page 13 at the second line up from the bottom, we have a $40,000 um, deficit. That's because we're using contract services um, for a position rather than a payroll line. So there's savings in a payroll line that we're not using because we're using the contracted service. And then I think go over to page 15. And that's the um, district wide custodian supplies. That's kind of the same thing um, to get the bulk purchasing power. We um, buy um, supplies for the entire school plus city and the city reimburses on a quarterly basis. So that likely won't have that deficit at the end of the year. Okay. And then on page 17, um, there are some at the very bottom of the um, first section, you'll see there's a lot of um, deficits there that um, are probably due to there's some that will move to capital funds. Um, I know our director, um, Kuzniers, was looking at repurposing some of the capital funds. So that will be um, some of those movements. But in order to get the projects going, we had to um, put them in a fund that we had available. So that won't be too bad. And then on page 19, which is the last page, um, we'll have a transfer at some point, probably between um, the tuition collaborative to the tuition non-public, but it'll be, you know, a wash. It won't be any, um, no deficit by the end. So, um, all in all, we are doing just fine. Um, I have recently done a in-depth look at the... Um, Payroll lines, which as Portia here, or Dr. Bonner hears me um, say, when we can encumber payrolls, which we're going to start to look at, hopefully, um, that'll be better off. But in any case, we're doing okay. Great. Thank you. Member Serafi Cox? Yeah. Um, uh Two questions. One is, um, I see Medicaid billing on here. Bobby, can you remind me, do we bill, so that we do bill Medicaid, right? Because I remember at uh, MASC, um, they were talking about uh, billing Medicaid and that only certain districts, like, it, it costs money to to do the billing and not everybody had the resources to be able to capitalize on that opportunity. Right, so um, basically we do, the school does do the work to bill Medicaid um, and we do use lower Pioneer Valley um, services to do so. Um, and then the city realizes those I don't want to say profits, but they realize that revenue. Um, so historically, on the school side, we were paying for that billing amount. But in my conversations with Director Nardi, um, they agreed, and the city council, they agreed that they would actually pay that service. So that's why we don't have that in the budget anymore. 
the city's taking on that expense. Correct. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Um, I see yeah. it in the in the original version of the budget, but you say it's not going to be spent this year. Okay, great. Um, and yeah. and thank you for reminding me how um, how that works. I had not remembered that we how how the money flowed. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My other question was on the subs. Um, can you can you tell us what is no pay status and are are there like more absences than normal happening or why? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> uh, um, I, I I would say that from what I've heard, um, there is definitely more absences than there has typically been in the past few years. Um, and as far as the no pay status goes, that means that somebody or um, people have overused what they are allotted for, like, say, sick or personal time, which means they've taken time off, which puts them then in a no pay. So they do not get their pay, um, which is, you know, additional work on um, our payroll service that not service, but our payroll personnel and HR department that has to recalculate all that pay. And then we still have to cover their work. Hence and the then, subs. yeah, the subs have Got to it. cover okay. that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Bobby? Um, so are you all set, Bobby, or anything else you want to report on? No, I'm good. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bobby. Um, okay. So that brings us down to the rest of the new business. So first is second reading and vote policy ACAB.